Okay. Welcome to the Hopkinton Planning Board meeting for Monday, January 25th. Uh, I'd like to thank HCAM for taping the, uh, the program tonight, or the meeting tonight. Uh, we're missing a couple of people. They might have to be reviewing the tape so they can vote on a future hearing. Uh, so that's very important to us and also so that we can have our meetings in public uh, with uh, our HCAM cam followers and in and, and, and the planning board groupies, I guess, out there. <laughs> uh, our agenda today, we have a public hearing for earth removal uh, for Eversource on South Street. We have a minor modification to 85 West Main Street. Uh, a thought for a cul-de-sac on 23 Thayer Heights Road. Uh, continued public hearing and maybe to close it out a subdivision uh, road construction plan on a paper street off of Leonard Street. And we'll also be continuing the public hearing uh, for Legacy Farms North. Uh, and plus a few other administrative things. So let's start with the public hearing for 26 South Street, Eversource Energy. This is an earth removal permit application. Come on in. And the whole team can sit up on the other side. Mm -hmm. That way the microphone can be used for TV. Okay, great. Well, good evening. My name is Mary Kate Neweiss. I'm an environmental specialist with Beals and Thomas. I'm here tonight with Eric Loss, a principal at our firm, and uh, Dwayne Boyce and Mike Zillick from Eversource. Uh, Eversource is proposing to expand their existing substation at 226 South Street and is seeking an earth removal permit towards that end. Uh, the existing substation is located in the industrial zoning district and is surrounded primarily by industrial and commercial uses. Uh, the substation has two existing transformers and bus sections and a switchgear building. The equipment is surrounded by a fence and there's an access drive off South Street. Uh, the expansion consists of an addition of a new transformer and bus section, a new switchgear building, and a temporary construction access drive, which and associated equipment including uh, conduits and uh, cables that will be in the vicinity of the temporary access drive. The earth removal is primarily going to be to establish a level grade for the third transformer and as well as to uh, install the conduits and cables and for the installation of the subsurface infiltration system. Uh, stormwater on site is going to be managed with a subsurface infiltration system in front of the proposed switchgear building and the new uh, surface which will be enclosed by a fence is going to be surfaced with uh, trap rock. So the applicant is proposing to remove up to 2,000 cubic yards of soil from the site um, there's not going to be more than 200 cubic yards stockpiled on the site at any one time and the soil stockpiles will be located outside of the on-site wetland resource area. Uh, we believe that this design for the site consists of the least impactful alternative. Other alternatives considered included expanding the station to the north which would involve significantly more earth removal and blasting due to the presence of uh, shallow depth to bedrock, ledge, and steep slopes. And expansion onto EMC's property would involve fill of the um, on-site isolated vegetated wetland. So we believe that this alternative is going to be the most uh, beneficial to the town and will allow the applicant to provide reliable electrical service to the region. The project's going to comply generally with the earth removal permit regulations. However, we are requesting a waiver from the 100-foot property line setback. Uh, due to the constraints that I listed, we believe that the current design is not going to have a negative impact on abutting properties since it is primarily industrially zoned and surrounded by industrial properties. So the project has been peer-reviewed by Beta Group Inc. in association with our Notice of Intent application, which is ongoing concurrently. Um, and we respectfully request that the Planning Board issue an earth removal permit with a waiver. Okay. Do Any you, questions? Uh, yeah. Do you want to kind of show us where oh, yeah. you're taking all the earth from? And sure thing. 
So the the trap rock surface is going to be in this area of the site. North is towards towards me. So that's going to be the bulk of the earth removal there, as well as in association with the conduits, which I believe are in this area. And the subsurface infiltration system is going to be adjacent to South Street. Where's your temporary ex entrance? Right there. Right there. Okay. Claire? Can you just show us where the uh, wetland resources are? Yep, sure thing. The on-site IBW is right here, right yeah. along the, uh, the property boundary. It's actually... Uh, drained by a uh, concrete pipe. And that's on EMC land? Yes. And is that the only wetland resource? That's correct. I have one question, Good. Good uh, Mr. Chairman. Um, you talked about having no more than 200 yards of dirt or soil visible. Where is that going to be stored on the, on the property? And for how long a period of time will it be, uh, will it be there? I believe it wouldn't be stockpiled for longer than 60 days, as I think what we had uh, said in the application. Um, Mike, where would uh, stockpiling take place? Um, it's more than likely we're not going to stockpile anything on site, but we want to have that ability to be able to if we need to. But as far as the back right corner of the stations, the north. Back, back right? Back right or be. Uh -huh. Is that back? Yeah, I'm thinking high. <laughs> right? So you got South Street down below. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So basically in this. <laughs> there, there. Frank, did you have another question? Yes, you, you mentioned the, the buffer. Um, have you uh, communicated with the uh, EMC? Yes, okay. uh, we actually have EMC's uh, approval to do. Uh, supplemental plantings in the buffer zone on their site. I, Elaine has a uh, copy of that approval. Thank you. Other questions from members of the board? And then I want to go through a few things on my own. Okay, let me, let me try a few here. Uh, as I think everyone on the board knows that this project was approved without site plan approval by the DPU. Uh, the town of Hopkinton actively pursued that as an intervener in that particular hearing. And what I thought was reasonable request, all of which were denied by the DPU. Uh, for one example was the height where they are 75 feet for the towers. And we proposed that the DPU give them a condition that says 75 feet, which is what they asked for. And instead, the DPU basically said unlimited, we'll just throw that zoning requirement out. So we went on all the buffer areas and said, hey, they're asking for X number of feet on every one. And the DPU just said, screw it. We're going to give them everything they want, so whatever goes on. And quite frankly, is one that spent some time on that. I'm not terribly excited about that, but that's not what's before us today, and it's not what our criteria is for earth removal permit. I think it's unfortunate that Eversource decided to pursue that line as opposed to asking just what they needed to do as opposed to asking for the world, which they got. And quite frankly, I think secondary feeders that come off of this are going to be more of a problem to the town than what we're currently seeing here, even though it does come right out onto the front and is not well landscaped, etc. However, the items that we're at to look at is that whether or not the earth removal conforms to the purpose of the chapter whether or not it's permitted, whether it will be injurious to the public health or safety, produce noise, dust, or other effects detrimental to the normal use of adjacent property, have a material adverse effect on the health and safety of people living in the neighborhood, etc., uh, will not result in traffic 
conditions on the road and the regulations contained in the chapter will be complied with. So that's kind of our criteria for tonight. We don't do a lot of earth removal report reports, so that's why I kind of decided to go through that at, at that point. Hey, yes, uh, can I ask a question yeah, on that point yeah. in terms of the traffic conditions? Will there be any situation where traffic is either halted or uh, rerouted at all due to the uh, earth removal? So all the work is going to be taking place on site within the footprint of the yep. station. The only possible time we might have some disruption to traffic is when you bring in the transformer itself. But it's usually off hours. Uh, and that's a one-time That's a one -time shot, right? Do you expect any blasting? Going to be on site on the property itself. Do you expect any blasting? No. Okay, so it's just digging it out. This is digging. Claire? I guess it's not related, but I just see our DPW director just went out there and he has a question with Eversource uh, following through. It's I think that problem got time. resolved. Did it get resolved? Yeah, we okay. have, I think, power to our pump station, which was concerned. That has been done. Okay. okay. But on a similar mode, we have a lot of poles in the middle of streets, et cetera, that quite frankly is waiting on Eversource to do their thing. And I'll tell you, it's almost to the point where I think this board might want to talk as a separate subject to introducing legislation to get some traffic considerations going through the legislature because quite frankly the the service on the electric side of Eversource is close to miserable. We have one that's in the middle of a road that we're doing a subdivision rerouting on and quite frankly we have Jersey Berries around it because the poles continues for the last four to almost six months right in the middle of the road that we're trying to construct. But that's not on today's thing but quite frankly if you take it back to your company that we're not happy campers with the amount of the service uh, here. Certainly. Yes, Claire. Well, I have a general question um, for the applicant. I'm looking at our memo from the director, and this may be just Elaine's words, um, but it says re waiver is requested from the requirement that there be a 100-foot undisturbed buffer to all property and street lines. Um, the proposed design is the most feasible layout to meet increased demand. So I'm wondering, um, again, this may be Elaine's wording, the most feasible layout, but... Um, if this were not granted, what uh, clearly this is what works best for your company. But if this waiver were not granted, what other layouts are possible? Is this the only layout, or is it just the most feasible layout? It's the it's least the impactful layout. Impactful on? Well, it's the smallest footprint that yeah. we can build yeah. in. So we had multiple iterations of a design, and we started off with a much larger footprint, and mm -hmm. over the iterations of the designs, we compacted as much as we could. So right now, we, I don't know that there's any locations, we do have that other foot undisturbed off of. So if the waiver were not granted, what would happen? What would you have to do? We couldn't build the project, and the town would not have a... a reliable source of power going into the future. So. The whole point of the project is to be able to increase the capacity of power mm. in the region. No, no I understand. I just it's because there is a need for additional power in the region. Right. It's a public benefit project. And where is that 100-foot buffer area again? That um, the in? property line is here, and the requirement is a, would be a 100-foot buffer within the property line Correct. that would be undisturbed. But you're looking for a variance off that, right? Correct. Where in particular would that 100-foot buffer be disturbed at? Uh, it would be primarily along this uh, southeastern property line where the fencing would be expanded and the trap rock would be surfaced in the vicinity of the on-site wetland. Got it. Trap See, rock with rip Pardon? Is trap rock with rip -rap? No, it's a lot smaller. Uh-huh. Okay. Rip -rap is like three or right. four inches. Right. Right. Trap rock is one inch, maybe. Uh -huh. It's basically, Fran, kind of to answer your question, mm -hmm. if we were doing this as a site plan review, we wouldn't even think about earth removal. I mean, that's incidental to the project. Yeah. But 
for some reason they think they need an earth removal project. Well, it is a, a requirement that anything with a building permit that has greater than, I believe it's 150 cubic yards of earth removal, does need an earth removal permit. So that's uh, our reasoning for seeking this approval. And we normally get it done with the site plan review. So they're exempt from, from the earth removal permit if they go through site plan review, but because site plan review isn't happening, then they still have to get the earth right. removal permit. Okay. So, so I think we've gotten to the point where probably most of the approval criteria can be met with appropriate conditions. And I think the appropriate conditions for establishing hours of operation should be per our bylaw on heavy equipment operation, which is what we insist on everyone. Uh, what are those hours? They are, I think they're seven to seven to six. Seven to eight days, and then eight Saturday hours, and nothing on Sunday for holidays. So consistent with the the town's order. Yes. Yeah. Uh, bond for typical this size site plan would be five thousand dollars in order to. In case a lot of your earth ends up on South Street and we need to clean it up, most people get it back at the end because they don't create a mess. Is in the site plan for your temporary access, do you have plans that show it with a construction? Uh, Eric Glass from Beals and Thomas. Uh, yes, we do have a, a stabilized. Construction entrance uh, proposed for 50 okay. feet off. That was a CONCOM request as well, and a suggestion from Beta also. Okay. So I'm thinking of $5,000 bond like we do for most stuff. Uh, what were you thinking, Elaine, for a deposit for an inspection? Um, I don't, it's up to the board whether you think. There should be inspections, and what we would have an inspector look at when he's out there. And the erosion control will be inspected by a CONCOM's agent. It's, I think that takes care of it as far as... Yeah, no, uh, I think that's adequate. Right. Okay, and then I'd like to see maybe a condition that the stockpile is not to exceed 200, 200. Cu cubic yards. I mean, that's such a constrained site, I don't think you can be a stockpile on anything there and do any of any real work there. Which, I mean, you might have a small pile while you're digging a trench and you haven't backfilled it yet, but, you know, that's minor. That's minor. Can the other thing I noticed in the, um, in the requirements from the bylaw, um, item I says that the board has to set um, a duration of the permit, so the board would identify how long the permit is good for. Okay. Construction is anticipated to last uh, 24 months. So 24 months from today or 24 months from whenever? From, from project start. start. From project start. What does that mean for us? Should they we should uh, notify us when the project. So we're anticipating project start in this spring. So, so basically this permit will be good for how many years, Elaine? 24 months. 24 months. Two years. Two years. So, Better not issue it until they're ready to start. Otherwise, it'll expire before they're done. Well, it could it could begin on the uh, they could notify us officially of when they're starting construction, and they could start from that right. date. And then 24. Okay, makes sense. That works for me. Yeah, we'll certainly be done the earthwork within that time frame. Maybe not the. the In Elaine, could we put a, re a restriction that it won't start till the pole gets moved out of the middle of Franklin Road? Any conditions you, you think are relevant? <laughs> point, of, uh, point of clarification. So the uh, pole issue with um, the wastewater treatment plant that uh, Dr. That's, that's, that's done. <coughs> that's, that's been addressed. After three months. <coughs> In a great expense because we had to demobilize our contractor. I'd be very interested in um, pursuing something that would help other 
projects in town happen sooner. Uh, it's one, it's one company, and it would be helpful to us to have one company resolve all issues um, that are open right now. Yeah, well, I'm not sure we can put all that on that, but I think I'm almost convinced that we, we need to go to a legislation mode in, in that area because it's it's just one horror story after another on electrical service and new development in this town, and we're growing like mad. Okay, so it looks like we need to do, let's do a first vote on request for the waiver. Uh, and this would be a vote to re to uh, to grant the waiver for a hundred foot undisturbed buffer. I seek a motion for so that. Moved. moved. Second. Seconded. Further discussion. Seeing none. How do you vote? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Anyone abstained? Motion carries. Okay. So the waiver's done. And then I look for a motion to find that we meet the two two criteria for the earth removal bylaw. Uh, items, which is found on page two of uh, Lane's memo, uh, with the following conditions: that the uh, operation will, uh, the permit will be for 24 months, and the applicant will notify the town when it's about to start. The hours of operation will be per the noise bylaw. The Bond to, for could, to guarantee conformity with the uh, conditions of permit will be five thousand dollars. Stockpile shall not exceed two thousand or two hundred yards cubic yards. I think that's it, right? Yes. Okay. So that's all in one motion, I believe. So so moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Further discussion. Seeing none, how do you vote? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Anyone abstained? Motion carries. Uh, motion to close the public hearing. Someone. Second. Oh, and there was no public outcry from anyone else on this one, I believe. Okay, so we did ask for the public. Okay, so now. Uh, motion moved and seconded. Moved and seconded to close the public hearing. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed say no. And we have a Motion carries. Okay, we'll write it up in the next, well, before that poll gets moved. <laughs> Thank you very much for hearing us. We heard you. <laughs> okay, let's see. We have uh, a little bit of time here before our next. Uh, Next piece of business. Uh, where are we on? There are no minutes for tonight. Uh, Conley Hill Estates. Did they no, the engineer no. get that? No, no. Okay, so that's off. Uh, why don't we discuss zoning advisory committee articles, town meeting articles, and yeah, wow. you, it, we see the Zach chairman here, and uh, that way he can potentially go home earlier than not, unless he likes to come back and see what we've got to do. Uh, John, why don't you come on up and let's talk. Well, give me a few minutes to say, Mr. Chairman. I uh, okay. actually didn't say to come this quickly as I'm saying thank you. Uh, we, we've got at the end of Lane's memo the list of things. If you want, oh, I can well, prompt I, you on those. Yeah, actually, if you could... Uh, and I'm just brief me on them because I, I I don't have the two early ones with me. Okay. Well, I'll I'll, 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 I'll. So if you can prompt me on them. Yep. Come on up here so the microphone can pick you up. Okay. Move over one more. Oh, I'm on this side of the table. Yeah. Okay. The first one was animal shelters. And we, this is not formal public hearing, but no, this no, is just a process to get us starting to think about. Yeah, things. and this was this was actually the order that we we did them, um, and uh, for, for the animal shelters, it was more that um, Bay Path was looking to try and and get a definition. Was that probably the best way to? Mm -hmm. 
um, get a definition for one so that um, the town can continue to keep having a place to for as as a as a public animal shelter so we don't have to build one and then a place for them in the um, chance that they may have to move um, one of the other things is also trying to see if there is any public land that the town may own that we may be able to lease to be bad that's a second that's looking down um, which is why we wrote it so that it could go in a couple different places in town because the, they, they, they really do a lot of good for the town and save us a lot of money okay and that was by special permit right. so right. basically yeah. uh, right. so they, they have a lot of hurdles to, to still jump through okay the second would be dog daycare yeah now this was one that came to us by um, the uh, inspectional department where um, if we we don't allow them right now <laughs> however if somebody somebody came to um, the, the department with a home business that just happened to do it they ha could have possibly had a case for being able to do one without any restrictions sort of what was what what, what happened to us with the um, solar one that we did before if we don't define what you can and can't do people might be able to find some loopholes to make it work so what we're trying to do was define what it is and where it could go so that um, where it can, can and can't go so we were truly using zoning for what it's meant to be um, and then we got a lot of input on that from uh, from uh, dog daycare owners and and I'm a, I'm a big user of one in Upton for my Doberman okay and then and that's also a special permit yeah yeah basically everything still ends up being special yeah. permit and but then uh, we're just trying to do some more defining hotel overlay district yeah the um, hotel overlay district I think all we did was define the, the tweak to reduce the amount of function space. Right, yeah. There was, well, what had happened was we we tried to attract a hotel for the last, I don't know, seven to ten years. And one of the one of the issues that we, we was pointed out to us is that we tried to design a hotel within a designed area. And what we designed is not the way they build hotels. We wanted an 8,000 square foot ballroom and that seats over 600 people in function room yeah, and they right they didn't really they don't build function rooms that big anymore and so for the so if we were trying to attract a a high-end hotel they just couldn't meet some of those requirements so we changed that to to what the um some of the other hotels in the area uh, are doing and i think we've reduced it to 1500 or something 1500 square feet which is about 12550 people but then they could also have multiple multiple ones that they could open up if they wanted to but not to have one big 8000 square foot um, and then you got three or four that are still you got like one meeting left i guess right yeah no, uh, uh, um, tomorrow is it tomorrow yes yeah tomorrow we're gonna uh, we have uh, elmwood park um the elmwood sustainable enterprise district um we're uh, we're not going to be doing a uh, an overlay district over an industrial district it ended up being very complicated as to what was allowed and what wasn't allowed what was allowed by special permit and so we basically ripped it all up and brought it down to two pages and it's uh, easier to understand and uh, it's easier for people to see what we're trying to encourage and what we're trying to discourage um, because the, when we're trying to do it for the last three or four years with a developer in mind it got quite complicated and now we have no developers in mind it's just us designing a a zone that we that we're trying to uh, redevelop and get rid of uh, I always call it 16 acres but but I was corrected and said that there's well more than that of, of parking lot right now 
and um, so to get rid of some of that asphalt and trying to make it green and, and recover some of that land. Okay. Um, we did some modifications to the sign bylaw um, because um, uh, there was a uh, Supreme Court, did it come down? Yeah, Supreme Court um, basically struck down a lot of the stuff that we and many other towns did to um, restrict what uh, the size of signs and content so basically we just can't can't control content and everything has to be on the level <laughs> everybody's uh, so you, you'll see we just <laughs> it's it uh, it sort of looks like some of my the stuff that comes from Zach that goes to here once in a while across all, all everywhere but <laughs> <laughs> that one's going to take a lot of review because it is. Yeah, uh, it is. But uh, but you know, basically, what we're doing is we just we went over what came back from Ray. It, it, it it's not as complicated coming to us because basically there's just a whole bunch of stuff he said hey, you can't do it. Um, and one of the ways we we it, it, one of the things happened um, with. Uh, some of the uh, elections, uh, campaigning signs, and some of the stuff for uh, the marathon. A lot of that stuff would have been banned, so we had to open up <laughs> that marathon month um, to basically say you can almost do whatever you want for that month, just so that we could get some of our marathon stuff up to that and celebrate the town. And uh, so when you see, you'll see that when it comes to it, I'll, I'll come I'll yeah. come back again for the sign. Uh, garden apartment, senior housing, village housing bylaws. That actually came from the planning board, so you guys probably know a hell of a lot more about it than I do. We just uh, we d we looked at some of your your um, lines and just some some of the modifications to the uh, to the bylaw, and uh, we'll continue to discuss that uh, tomorrow. And uh, I guess we're also go we don't we haven't even started discussing the historic structures. I think that we we. I think somebody from your group is coming tomorrow. Uh, we have the public hearing at the same time, so it depends oh. on what time it is. Yeah. Yeah. They're the same okay. building, but may yeah. not be able to. Yeah, thank you. It happens, can, happens to me a lot in this building. <laughs> yep. I can yes. speak for it now, but I think we probably want to move on. Yep. 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 Okay. okay. So Excellent. we really need to get. Zach's final recommendations. Hopefully, you'll have the quorum yeah, tomorrow. We, and yeah, we had we had, we had a quorum yeah. trouble uh, last week, so we we opened, mm -hmm. and then we couldn't vote on anything because we had we had uh, uh, one of our members had to leave. So okay, we we were able to discuss it, but not uh, vote on anything. Okay, so thanks, thank you. Thanks, John. Thanks, very much. thanks to thanks all the members of Zach. And if the board wants a rundown on that historic one, um, I can talk to that at later the on in the meeting. At okay. The meeting. Great. Thank you. Sure. Okay. Uh, let's uh, 85 West Main Street. Come on up. Good to see you again. Good to see you. It's been a while. It has. Uh, I think we're here to talk about some minor modifications to site plan and it's almost an as built yeah, at this it's, point. Well, it's, it's basically relocating a tree. Um, and, and something with the elevation. So why don't you show yeah, us? the elevations. In my, that store is open now, so I don't know. That's, yeah. uh, we can talk about it, but um, the big thing is the tree. Uh, okay. So I know you guys have small plans. I brought slightly larger ones. Uh, kind of show us where the tree yeah, was so and basically, where it's going. You know, it's the one right in the front corner where the Verizon store is now. There's a tree that sits in this island. Oh, that island. Um, okay. Yeah, it sits here closest to the, the gas station side. Um, and it basically sits right in front of their sign. Is it there now? The tree is there now. You can't re you don't notice it that much now because there's no leaves on it. Right. Yeah. So it's not a big deal now. But when the leaves grow out, it's going to be almost impossible to see their sign. And it kind of blocks their front door. So we wanted to basically take that tree and move it over to the side, kind of at the end of where the guardrail is, um, at the driveway going down the side of the building. Um, we just, we just don't want you to move it to a point that will block. Right. If we do the right turn lane, which we're Yeah, pursuing. we're keeping it. We're keeping it way yeah. out of that. Okay. You know, nowhere near that. That's why we push it all the way as close to that guardrail as we could. So we're probably, you know, 30 something feet off the property line. Did you put it into the other island on the corner of the Unibank? Yeah, we did look at doing that. Um, I think the engineer's concern was there about visibility coming around that corner because a lot of pedestrians who walk across right there going to Starbucks and stuff. Is this going to be a tall it, tree with a yeah, trunk? Yeah, it's, it it, it's, it's a tall tree. It's a red oak. 
that's uh -huh. there now. Um, but you know, the the branches kind of start around five feet or so. Um, so someone driving by in an SUV, it's kind of at their eye level uh, where it might be blocking it. Um, you know, and then also, you know, coming, it's still kind of blocking signage. You know, people coming towards the highway down West Main Street, you know, might block a little bit of the front of the building. But the big thing was, you know, kind of, it's not a great spot from a visibility around the corner of that building. A lot of the island here at the, at the uh, corner gonna, of the driveway. That's going to be... There's already a tree there. Yeah. Oh. yeah, there's a tree sitting there right now. And then we got 10 feet more that... You know, yeah, it's you can't add roadway. anymore. Yeah, it's going to be roadway there eventually, so we can't put any more there. So where do you want to move it to? So essentially, uh, on the plan, it's kind of uh, it's clouded. Let's see where it's moving. So it moves from this island just right over there across the. Well, you know, part of the purpose of this landscaping, by the time you put along the edge, it it serves very little purpose. Part of the purpose, usually, on um, landscaping within parking lots, is to is to soften the look of mm -hmm. the parking lot. You're just going to have nothing but, you know, asphalt. And, um, you know, quite frankly, your tenant in Unibank, um, no one really questioned too much the tower element. They said that was their their trademark thing. But, you know, now they've got alternating colored lights, blue and green and red, We've never looked at lighting interiorly because we never thought that was an issue, but it looks like the carnival's come to town. Uh, I've had a lot of people complain about it. People who live across the street tell us that the blue and green and red lights are on all night long. Um, you know, if we'd ever known that they were going to be putting interior lighting that changed colors, I don't think that ever would have gone down with this board, and we worked really hard on lighting bylaws to try to develop lighting that set the correct tone and character for the for the town. And now you want to have an asphalt wasteland. All these businesses have their names on the monument sign. Um, you know, the whole purpose is to soften the look. Um, you know, it's got the Las Vegas strip going here with the colored lights, so. You know, I, I, I don't see how the people in the Verizon, if their sign is out on the monument, um, are going to have trouble being identified. Or, you know, somewhere else in the corner, but by the time you put it along the edge, I mean, I'm not going to say don't put a tree in because I'd like to have more trees, but it basically serves no purpose. That's just my opinion. Is that me? Go ahead. Uh, I agree with Claire 100%. And, um, I'd be voting no against any change for removing a tree. I'd be more than happy to have you add trees. Um, one of the reasons that I was on Con Commons came up to us, and one of the reasons that this type of idea was approved by them was because it was a parking lot without any vegetation, and this plan brought the vegetation into where there wasn't vegetation. Yeah, I mean, there's still going to be vegetation there. There's still a number of shrubs and bushes in that spot. It's not uh, like not we're that pa type. paving it, over it's, it. It's, it's, I, I tell you then, if it, it, I voted for it then because that's the way. It, if you're going to change it now, I'll, I'll be. That's it's you're changing it after the fact, and I don't. I don't think that's right. Uh, if if you have tenants that they can't see the sign, we have a nice green town with with trees. If they want to do business there, that they'll have trees, and they'll they'll be. They, they'll hopefully they'll be fine. Well, while we're kind of griping a little bit. The other gripe that I've heard is music outside in the Starbucks one at like eight or nine o'clock at night. Music? Yeah. Nice jazz. <laughs> but it was in, it, it, it was it was it was in early December when I went by and, and heard it, and you know it was cold. Nobody was out there. Right. I mean, you know, at least if nobody's out there, tell them to turn the outside <laughs> speakers off. Right? Yeah. Um, I, I mean, and I yeah, heard it across the street. Yeah, and uh, so Cliff, the guy across your neighbor, is probably not terribly yeah, happy yeah. about that. Though he probably likes the nice jazz, but <laughs> I mean, yeah, I don't. I mean, I my uh, my involvement as far as all that stuff goes kind of ended when we turned the thing over. Then, I, mean, I like example the the colored lights. I didn't even know about that either until someone sent me a picture two days ago. I've been hearing. I hadn't even seen it. I hadn't even seen it. I hadn't even seen it on there.
it's, it's there are things they submitted to me as far as the working drawings go. Um, yeah. I guess they must have looked at it and figured it was allowed. And the colored lights it did. Or it's wasn't kind prohibited. Of, it is say. kind of unique. Uh, I mean, it's and not, not in a good way either. Well, that's a gateway to Hoffington. I mean, it's... I thought originally it was just during the grand opening week, but it's, I've seen it since. It's on every night. I, mean, so, yeah, I would also mention that the, the current tenant, Verizon, and this may have just been a scheduling error, but um, they were scheduled to meet with Design Review last week um, to discuss their sign, and nobody showed up. So we didn't review it because we weren't going to waste our time if the applicant wasn't there. But the sign has outdoor gooseneck lighting on it. Um, you know, it, it's got lighting to make it visible. Um, it's not like it's blocked by a gigantic tree. And again, there's a monument sign. So um, I'm just one of the board, but this isn't making the case for me that we should just do anything to take away from from the elements we've put in to try to try to make this a nice, you know, a nice look. Okay. Well, speaking to the issue of you know, relocation of the tree, I think moving the tree 20 feet away on the other side of the driveway is not that grossly bad that it's going to completely, you know, destroy whatever look we've got. I, I'm willing, personally, willing to approve the relocation of the tree with the hopefully with the assurance that maybe you'll talk to some tenants about the yeah, are those are those lights in your bank on all night apparently I talked I talked to people in the area and they I said can, that they I are on at night now maybe mention, just one night they didn't turn the lights it's one, up, it's one thing if, if if maybe it's business hours I can almost see that but just to call attention to yourself all night long you know, I mean, we required, I believe, all the lights to go off at when the business was shot. Right. And that. Well, that's I would seem like it would be covered by that. But yeah. I, I'll admit, I I talked to the president of that bank from quite often. You drive so by on your way home. I mentioned it to him just from. Oh, you know, I drove by on the way here. Yeah. Someone, I've, I can show you the text on my phone. Yeah. My, my broker took me. Yeah. Did you know those lights were going in? No, yes. it's. It's a mess. Okay. So, you know, I think the Starbucks just, building is really good all the way up in there. Yeah. We had guidelines in general that require landscaping within parking lots. And the reason for that is to soften the look of the asphalt wasteland. Um, and that's why there's landscaping required around the building, not off in the periphery, but around the building and within the parking lot. And once you remove that, I think you really, you know, you, you take away. Now you've got the balance of the trees on both sides. So I've made my case, but it, it's not the same when it's all around the periphery as opposed to what we usually look for is in the parking lot. I, I, I could argue that you're going to soften the western side of the building by where the new location is from Main Street. So I, you know, it, to me it's not not that, that as big a deal uh, for that. But that's up to me. So I don't want to you guys propose a motion to, to uh, entertain the approval of the tree location as a minor change if somebody else cares to do that. If not, then propose it. Claire can propose a motion to say that we disapprove the change. Can I ask before we move yeah. that forward, what change, because it seems like this was foreseeable, now now it's a conflict and now you're trying to change the plan? You know, it's quite frankly just one of those things that someone should have noticed when you know the plans put together I think originally the tree was at the corner over there when the landscape designer first did it and then between the civil engineer and the traffic engineer they discussed you know potential visibility issues around that corner and they decided to move it to the other side because it was still you know within the parking lot so to speak um, so they moved it to that side for that uh, and I just you know, I don't think anyone ever said. And also on, on the site plans, that unit was shown as a big unit. They didn't have it separated into two smaller units. So thinking that, you know, maybe the sign, so they thought the sign would have been in the middle and not 
on you know one on each side so it might it probably wouldn't have blocked it at that point um, so there's a number of things that you know it's probably something someone should have foreseen but you know they just didn't I mean you know as far as you know the other issues go I mean it's you know I do fully understand that you know you guys are want to see, you know, trees on the interior of the parking lot. Um, you know, I think in a bigger parking lot with his aisles and stuff with end things, I, I understand that. Um, I think from the cons-com standpoint, I mean, the tree being there versus not being there isn't... I think the big thing that people really liked, at least my recollection of the cons-com meetings, was... You know, there's a lot more green space on the lot now than there was before. Even though we've redeveloped and added square footage, there's actually significantly more green space now than there was as well as, you know, drainage treatment and all that. I think that was the big plus I remember people getting pretty high on as far as the cons come uh, Can um, I throw yeah. out a possibility before we get to this point? Um, what would you think of replacing that tree with a different kind of a planting, oh. like a very tall conical um, arborvitae or something that will provide the greenness and the softness? Well, it won't give the shade, well, but it would soften the yeah, well, we're, What someone right. had mentioned to me um, was doing something not necessarily tall and conical, but more of a tree that wouldn't quite grow so high, like a crab apple or mm -hmm. something like that, that mm -hmm. would max out around six feet. It wouldn't spread. Um, you know, yeah, and wouldn't, you know, mm -hmm. end up spreading and just taking over the whole front of the building. Right. Um, which, you know, a red maple will eventually do. Sure. Uh, you know, and again, it's not necessarily now as opposed to five mm -hmm. years from now. Mm -hmm. How big is that tree going to be? And are we going to have to be pruning it constantly so, you know, mm -hmm. people driving around the building aren't hitting it? Um, so, I mean, something like that, I think, you know, would be, you know, anything that helps the situation with the signage visibility and the storefront visibility is a bonus. If you went that route, I might suggest that we, you know, table this and you ask the art landscape architect just to come up with a different kind of a planting that would still soften that corner and provide some shade and wouldn't get so large. Maybe the, the problem is not the location, it's the choice of species. That's yeah. causing your problem. Yeah, no, that's... Um, that would, meet every, that I, would be a win-win for everybody. Yeah, I spoke with John Cusick, the engineer on the project today, and I think he, he was the one who mentioned crab apples don't grow that high. Mm -hmm. So we probably wouldn't block the signage. So it'd probably end up being something like that that we'd present. So. Oh, I'm, I'm willing to kind of table it until we get another species or something like that, sure. if that's okay. Uh, given that it's middle of winter, you're not going to be doing much with it anyway in the next bit. Uh, the only other question I had for you is, I've heard from a lot of people that parking is incredibly tight. It was at the beginning. Okay, I, not so bad now? We had issues at the beginning where when Starbucks first opened, mainly because Starbucks had like nine employees in there. Um, but I've been by there um, seven or eight times in the past month and a half, and my Real estate burger has gone by seven or eight times in the past month and a half. And when I've been there around, you know, the people who told me at the beginning it was really busy, um, you know, had given us times. And, you know, it was really between 11 and 3 during the week that was so busy. So I went there and down there various times during that period. Um, and, you know, I've counted as high as 14 spots open recently. 2.30 today, I think there was three spots, and I didn't go around right. the back of the building. Yeah, so I didn't. yeah. I mean, it definitely fluctuates. Yeah. When it got really, really busy and there was, you know, no spots available at times was uh, also when we had a lot of contractors on the site. Okay. And we had as many as 12 contractors there at one point. Um, okay. So, so it's maybe, and, and and maybe self-correcting, Yeah, I too. did actually have my, uh, my traffic engineer go out there as well okay. um, to do counts on a Saturday because I wasn't going to be anywhere in the area on a Saturday, but uh, he went down there and verified that the numbers were basically what he had predicted the process as far as he counted people going into Starbucks, he counted how many cars in the parking lot, how many spaces were open, and it was with, it was almost dead on with his okay. prediction. So. Okay. So. I have one question along those lines, yeah. if you don't mind. Yeah, go ahead. Um, I was there like at 6 or 7 o'clock at night at Starbucks, and uh, they were getting delivery, and they, the truck was on Lumber Street blocking the whole lane, and I thought their deliveries were supposed to come in to the front and then leave by the back side, and uh, 
instead they were just kind of there. They know. just stopped at Lumber Street. Yeah. Okay. Well, I can mention that to the operations people. So. Okay. So, I guess the, the action item is come on back. Yep. With the new tree. We need a motion to yeah. table. I don't think we need anything. <laughs> okay. I think we're also supposed to talk about the release of the bond. Uh, okay. I, I think even with the tree, the, the bond is fine. Uh, entertain a motion to uh, release the five thousand dollar performance bond. Mm -hmm. Is it five or is it ten thousand? Five. It says five years. Five. Whatever it is. What, whatever the bond is. You're just requesting its release. Yeah. Okay. Is, is construction complete? Oh yeah. yeah. Except yeah. for a tree. A tree. <laughs> yeah. Second. Clarity. Uh, the motion. Uh, motion was to release the bond. And it's been seconded. Further discussion? Seeing none, how do you vote? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Anyone abstain? Motion carries. We'll put you on at a reasonable time. Next. Yeah. Whenever. Whenever. I can, I can come to the next one. I'll, I'll shoot a lane in the email tomorrow. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Get your jacket on. Mm -hmm. You remember it. I wouldn't notice that. You remember it. Okay. Uh, we're looking for Jeff and Crowd. Stay your heights. Stay your heights. Yes. Looking for Thayer Heights Crowd. Doug, come on, come on in. 8.15. Yeah. Hey, Rick. Oh! The yes. Support. Okay. My name is Scott Miller. Um, I had submitted a scenic road bylaw permit. And, uh, we had so forgotten to put it on the agenda. So, so, so Mr. <laughs> Resnick has graciously allowed me to try to talk to you yeah. quickly. Okay. If possible. Did you receive the plans? No. Why don't, why don't we get this done first? Okay. Sure. Okay. Because this is still 8 15, Scott. Yeah. No. Okay. So before yeah. our 8 30, you can go. Okay. Mr. Chairman, board members, my name is Doug Resnick, and I represent the Marino family who lives at, uh, on Thayer Heights, and they have an exceptionally um, large lot with a house that's uh, located uh, close to Thayer Heights, and there's substantial acreage in the, uh, in the back, um, enough for another house lot. Um, Paul, Jeff's dad, still owns the property, but uh, right now his Jeff's sister lives in the existing house, and Jeff would like to build a house down and back. Um, we've consulted briefly with <clears throat> Ken and Elaine. Um, we understand that there are a few issues, but we also, uh, I'll let Dave Markerdon explain this, have um, some thoughts about how we might get to the beyond the uh, no dead end rule. Okay. Yeah. Try it. Go. Yeah, we'll try. <laughs> uh, as Doug stated, we're, we have a 2.7-acre uh, lot, and what we're looking to do is create a private street. What we're naming it right now is Marina Way. It's about 327 feet long and 30 foot wide. Uh, we have an existing house on lot one. Uh, the frontage for this new lot a lot one would come off of the new road with 163 foot of frontage and 48,000 square feet. The second lot, lot two, where Jeff would like to uh, construct a home, would have uh, 150 foot of frontage, which is in the RB zone, with 61,000 square feet. Uh, we have permission uh, to use town water, town sewer for the lot. We're proposing a variable width, uh, no, a meandering driveway, minimum width of 12 foot. 
uh, with an extended driveway off the back, off the end. Um, we, we do intend to evaluate drainage. Um, and we have a wetland in the left rear corner of Lot 2. Um, and our intention is to try to keep everything outside the buffer zone so that we don't have to file with conservation. Uh, we intend to conform to stormwater management. Um, we have good sight distance on Thayer Heights Road with Marino Way in both directions. Um, and we're looking also to construct a uh, walking path. Uh, uh, the location exactly will be determined with your butter, Mr. Palmer, at a later date. But as part of our submission, we propose that path all the way down to Boston Edison property. To date, Mr. Chairman, we've spoken to Mr. Palmer, and um, he, of course, you know, it's premature for him to commit one way or the other. He needs to assess what's possible to do with his own property, and but there's a good chance that we'd be able to create a walking trail and maybe something even more substantial. Well, we're just kind of getting the want to sure. get the reading of the board. Okay. Uh, uh, Doug, is that Palmer the property in back? Yes. It goes down onto Williamsway. Williamsway. Which they were before us earlier. And, and where's the Edison property? It's uh, just it, beyond that. It's the little strip. Oh, 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 okay. It's the right away. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I think at our meeting we gave you a copy of the board's policy on exceptional circumstances and Elaine you got a copy of that again we have not granted one of these I don't think uh, using memory and I don't know whether this is something we want to start with I mean Other members of the board can feel free to kind of speak in, but basically this would allow back, back lot zoning and would open up hundreds of lots in town. Cans of um, You know, our, our main motivation in being here, Mr. Chairman, is the fact that the Marinos have owned this property for a very long time. Um, Jeff's sister lives in the existing house now. Jeff would like to live on the property. And, you know, I know over the years the board has heard a lot about family subdivisions and that sort of thing. But if it's if we can't do something along these lines, then um, you know, Jeff and perhaps his sister are gonna have to leave Hopkinton. That's something they don't want to do. Are there is, is this case are there exceptional circumstances? Well what we were hoping to to um, what we were hoping to establish as exceptional circumstances would be a trailway from beyond the cul-de-sac, um, perhaps through Mr. Palmer's um, land to the easement. And I think it's uh, uh, Stone Crossing. No, it's um, um, the small subdivision off of uh, Ash. Williams Way? Well, Williams Way is Mr. Palmer's. So no. It's not Stone Crossing. No, it's Stone Crossing. Williams Way, I think. I can see it on the trailside lane. Trail. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Well, I'll tell you, it's the exceptional circumstances. I think the last one we granted was a gift of 30 acres of state land to the state, uh, Christian Way. Uh, you know, we've done it for a lot less, but, but just to divide a to divide a, a lot into two two places just because you've got a bunch of acres is not what we've done in a long time. If, if I may, I guess in fairness to you know other homeowners in town, just on this land, you know, plan that I'm looking at that shows the different lots, and just. You know, seeing a number of lots that are pretty good sized lots, and so then I would see a uh, roadway going in the side and stick another house in back of, you know, there's just a whole bunch of houses that uh, all of a sudden, you know, you can stick a, stick a long driveway in and put another lot in back. I, uh, I could just see this 
replicated all over the place. And no, and Tom sure. Reading did did turn down a few years ago backlot zoning. Overwhelmingly, it, it, the planning board about ten years ago, before I was on it, proposed it and it got crushed. Mm -hmm. I mean, not not just a little bit; it got crushed. Um, you know, we're also I think we're we're asking the board to recognize that things are a little bit different right now, and that um, the notion of a family subdivision is not that different from, in some cases, from backlot zoning. Um, we were trying to offer something extra to the town, and um, you know, there's <coughs> there's still a possibility that we may be able to make a connection with another road, but that's way too premature to talk about. Anyone feel like they want to change your precedent with this? I'm not seeing anyone that's that we're very you know this is beyond what we've done as it's documented in that uh -huh. memo f for a lot of years uh -huh. and I, I think it has a lot of ramifications to the, the memo of about. course is from Larry and dates back to 1996 yeah okay. things have changed yeah. since then there is an attachment that, that talks about since then. Since then. The history since then. Yep. Didn't this get litigated too? Yes. And the board prevailed. Mm -hmm. So. And I also see some of the, the list of some of the other uh, circumstances which you've identified as exceptional. And yep. I and, I, and I don't find this. I don't find anything in this plan that can, meets those exceptional, in my opinion, meets the exceptional circumstance aspect. I Anybody don't else? Thank you. Thank you. Does Bob get to speak on this? Sure. Go ahead. <coughs> can I be first? Yeah. Yeah. I, I respect everything you guys do, and I know what you're aiming for, and, and I don't want a house in my backyard either. Um, the only thing, if, if there were exceptional circumstances, is that what, what we're losing is the, the, the people who have been in town for a long period of time. This kid's dad, Paul Marino, bought this house in 1975. I coached all these kids, the brothers and the sisters in soccer, along with my own kids. <coughs> he works for a local plumber. He wants to stay in town. <clears throat> and it's frustrating for him because on the one hand, he's paying $2,000 a month over wood partners over at the uh, apartment building, and he wants to build a house. His kids are going to go to school here anyway. Um, it would just seem to me that, <clears throat> that there is some advantage to being, you know, more or less a, a, a town person. We, we want to keep these people. We don't want to have them make, make them go to Douglas. We don't want to make them go to Uxbridge. And we want to keep them here. So <clears throat> all I ask the planning board is to think about, and I, again, I respect what your, your, your thing is, but think about the fact that, you know, we've got you know, 250 new units over here on one side of Western University. We've got 200 some odd on the other side. We've got 200 some odd down at the Muse. We've got this one kid who wants to build one house behind his dad's house. If there's any extenuating circumstances, the house has been in the same ownership, the front house, since... The house was built in 1975. 40 years. I, I would just ask the board to talk about it. I, I think you can make a circumstance that would fit this situation, which wouldn't fit every other situation. You know, the longevity in town, it, it's a big thing. It's a big thing for me because I'm getting to the point where I don't have clothes to go to anymore to see anybody I know. So I don't know anybody anymore, which is kind of frightening for me. I want these kids to be in town so I know their kids. And, and, and my grandkids will hang around with them. I, you know, that's what little towns used to be. And, and uh, I would just hope that you guys would, would consider this. Um, and, I, and I know the spot you're in, but I think you could make enough circumstances that are specific to this. It wouldn't be specific to every new house that comes down the road. Because it is what it is. It, it, it used to make a difference if you lived in town and were here for a long time. You know, when I was growing up, there was like five names in town. There was, there was you know, the Dianas and the McIntyres, and, and that was it. They all lived in town, and they all built houses around their houses. 
this kid just wants to do the same thing. And uh, the opportunities for a kid now, as you know, are a few and far between if he wants to stay in town. And so what we're doing is we're inviting all these other people from out of town. We're giving them all the housing they want. And yeah, 40 years from now, they'll be townies too, I suspect. But the, uh, we're losing a big asset here. And, and okay. I just hope you think about it. Wait. Mike, I think you ought to know more than anyone else what, what the precedent we'd be setting. And it's, it's a big one if we go to this type of backlog type zone. Are there any of the um, other neighbors here? Any abutters? I, yeah, I'm, I, I'm Ed Palmer. I own the 12 acres behind. I mean, eight and a half acres behind. And you're on Chestnut Street, Ash Street? Uh, well, yeah, I'm way. the last lot of William's Way. This house here. If I can just make a comment um, to Mike's plea, and in the years that I've been on this board, I've heard a lot about family subdivisions, haven't seen too many actually put into um, use. I understand the reasons of, for the concept, which are just what Mike spoke about, but um, I think one of the reasons the boards have not been doing it that much is that operationally it's quite unenforceable um, you cannot put any kind of a restriction that <coughs> says that this property will always belong mm -hmm. to that family and things people's circumstances change we've had people come that had a small child that said they wanted a family subdivision so their child when they, they don't know what that child's going to do um, and and ones that I've seen that did go in and then you know there's a divorce or something changes and you know Eight, ten years down, they don't even live there anymore. And so it, 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 if there were a way that you could assure that this always did what it was designed to do, that would be one thing. But legally, you can't. So you really do have to look at it like any other development request with the understanding that in all likelihood, over time, that's exactly what it will be. Mm -hmm. and they're, and they're in life we, we recognize that, and, and through the chair. Clear the pendulum has swung back and forth on family subdivisions many times over the last 35 years that I've mm -hmm. been watching. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the problems is today, and you are the exception, and Ken's the exception. There are very few people sitting on well, the boards. Old people, you're doing the old thing. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, hey, I'm that. just a newcomer. I'm I'm only 37 years here, so. Um, but but again. You know, people don't even know the names of the families that that accomplished so much of this stuff that made the town what it is today. And, um, you know, the Marinos would like to continue in that tradition. We will try and develop something perhaps more substantial. Okay? Thank you. If, if I could say yeah. this, um, I think you worked on my house. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I think it didn't leak. I think, I think that uh, if, if this isn't working out, I'm, I'm, I hope that there'll be other other ways to find a home in Hoppington, either new or, or otherwise. And uh, um, it, just because this isn't a way um, doesn't mean it's not the okay. way. So okay. let's 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 move Thank on you. to the next agenda. We're running very late again. Okay, so the next one was uh, Road. So my name is Scott Miller. I'm representing the Equestrian Building Company. Uh, we recently acquired six lots along South Mill Street, three of which uh, South Mill is a scenic road in town. So pursuant to the scenic road bylaw, uh, we're requesting approval. Um, three of the lots, house number five, which is lot 17. I have a bigger plan. Of what? There's no trees. There's no trees. Uh, three inches or greater within the right of way. Uh, the only impact is the first house on the left, house number five, which is lot 17, and the two houses on the far right, lots 21 and 22, which are house number 17 and 21. Um, I've submitted pictures to the board. You got to break um, the stone wall in yes. three spots. Yes. 
There's really no stone wall on lots 21 and 22. There's like maybe four or five rocks still laying there. The rest of the wall that's shown on the plan is completely gone. Um, there is, however, uh, a reasonable looking wall on lot 17. What I would propose is to the area that I open up for the driveway, I will have, uh, I use New View, Doug DeWolf in town for all my landscaping and stonework. I would propose to have New View uh, restack the amount of wall that I remove on lot 17 uh, and, and put it adjacent to the existing wall. Uh, the other two areas, again, lots 21 and 22, if you were on site or saw the photos, it's probably four or five rocks laying on the ground. Board members, does that seem reasonable? I'm assuming what you're talking about when you say adjacent is you would put them back in the right of way. Along the, along the lot line, yes. So on the town. To the existing wall. Yes, but it needs to be, if it's taken out of the town, stone wall area, it needs to go back into town property so those rocks don't get... Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, it's, it would be adjacent to the existing wall, which yes. is along the right-of-way. So, yes. In, in the right-of-way. Correct. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I'm sorry, I don't know. What is the question? He's asking permission to basically cut three driveways in. Stonewall. At 17, 15, 11? Uh, it, on this plan, it's lot 17, lot 21, and 22. House numbers 5, house numbers 17, and house number 21. <coughs> I would entertain a motion to allow the three driveway openings at lots 5, 17, and 21 with the provision that the excess stones be stacked on lot, was it 17? No, be retained within the right of way. Be retained on the right of way, but to augment the existing wall on lot 17. 17. So, just to be clear. The existing wall on lot 17 will belong to who? It's on the, looks like it's on the border right on the border of the right, of, right okay. edge of the right. What of I'm getting at is that you want, when you're taking from a stone wall in, in a historic stone wall, mm -hmm. you don't want it to go on to private property it because won't. a private property owner can then later on decide to exactly. do whatever. So, so they have to stay perfect. on town. So that's why I'm... I'm Splitting hairs here. No, about so if you look at this plan right on, here. Sure. Yes. The stone wall is right on the the edge of the right away in the property line. Okay, so where it's taken out here, it'll be put right there. But being on the property line, it is still going to be clearly the town's wall. That's right. Not the property owner. Correct. That's, okay. that's what I want. Yeah. Okay. Entertain, the, entertain a motion. So I'll move. We'll hear a second. Second. Everyone ready for a vote? I have a question. Go ahead. How far are this? I know we don't have the paperwork and this came up, whatever, but how, has this gone through the Conservation Commission? And yes. And it's all been I have approved? existing order of conditions, yes, for all the lots. And even though you're within, like, most of the 100-foot buffer zones of wetlands in three of the buildings? If I'm reading this right? It has existing order conditions for all six lots. Not, not relevant to our right, right, decision. It, does, it is relevant in, me, in terms of the house is going to be a certain way, the driveway is going to be a certain way. That's correct. It doesn't matter where the driveway goes, as long as we're approving the driveway, is that I'm fine? Yep. Okay. Any other questions? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Anyone abstain? Motion carries. Thank you. 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 Okay, now we're running really late. Let's, uh, Doug, let's uh, do Leonard Street. Mr. Chairman, this is a uh, continued public hearing on uh, uh, the petition to construct the road on a public paper street. Um, we have, uh, I think from the beta letter that was circulated today, we have um, accomplished most of everything that Andy wanted us to, to do and see. One thing we did do over the course of last week was move the road over to the east, um, west. Um, Why don't you show us all what you changed sure, in Dave. the last month Rick. or last oh, since, since we just made. Yep. Please. Um, okay. <laughs> um, the uh, 
easement. Now, the existing catch basin is here. Yep. Uh, Lennon Street here is at the top of the page. Uh, and so what we've done is we've moved the roadway over two and a half feet. So um, the easement that was there no longer exists. So we moved this roadway over two and a half feet. Uh, the berm still exists. We're proposing a berm, uh, same lengths as uh, previously indicated. Um, we've made the change from the first part of the road up to the first 100 foot. We okay. added a small curve in there. So there's no pavement on private property uh, to the east okay. on Alicia's have, property. Have, have, have you <clears throat> moving the catch basin? Yes, we have. Uh, the, catch, oh, the, exist, the existing catch basin remains. We're proposing a catch basin here with a new manhole and then going into our storm septa just as we were previously. So we've just shifted this over a little bit, two and a half feet to the right. Okay. Okay. Do we change the tree? So uh, originally we were giving Alicia parcel A, that's no longer the case, uh, proposing a fence along the rear property first. Uh, that parcel A now has been combined with lot one, it just gets a little, a little bit larger. Uh, street trees, we've added a pear tree as a second, a second tree, alternating our species. So, very, very minor change. Questions? And, and Beta, you're comfortable with everything now? Yeah. Yeah, the few remaining questions from the last hearing, uh, they, they uh, satisfied our, our concerns. Uh, the uh, two neighbors here that are affected the most. See Alicia. No. I've been talking to Alicia for the last week or so, and she's fine with doing it this way. I, I can't speak for him, but he's still getting this property. And Betty. they are still getting this property. Okay. So, and you're still he, putting in the fence? He, no. no. He, he's well aware. I mean, I, I told him what happened, and we were shifting and everything. Like I said, I can't speak for him, but I think he's fine with it. He was comfortable with mm -hmm. the pavement on his mm -hmm. land at... Part of his driveway. Yeah. Right. Nothing really changed on his this area, just this road shifted a little bit. Question in terms of are the three um, sites also going to still be well or are they going to be well, up well. Yeah. They're all the wells? So mm -hmm. There's no change on no that. No change on yeah. that. There were three changes the road with the catch basins, the trees, and I think we took off the subdivision fence. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's the right. fence in the fossil. Why are you taking off the fence? Because so Alicia didn't, that was part of our discussions with Alicia. Alicia. She was just just as happy to leave it be. Um, we were on the sidewalk, and I heard the fence. Um, I heard this neighbor here ask for stormwater management, some kind of berm in front of their property. And this neighbor here? Yes. And I, don't um, and I heard these neighbors, um, uh, they're... they're get in the garage right. and um, I'm concerned I have a question what is the safety status of the garage do who actually owns it right now I own it right. okay uh, he was at the last meeting and was happy with everything uh, you expressed that uh, I can tell you that what I have with him so long as he supports it doesn't oppose this uh, he's going to get the garage I have to clean it out I have to pour the floor and I have to do some trees there I'll see making a new I'm going to clean the whole garage off for him, pour the floor, nice. he gets the garage. I think he's very happy, but again, I can't speak for him. As far as the safety concern, it's solid. I mean, the roof's not leaking, but it's an old building. I mean, it's break, it's block. You know, the windows are gone. There's a couple little old buildings here I'm going to knock down also. Um, okay. He's not here, so I can't speak no, for me. Well, I can't either, but I'm I, he's, I've asked, I've heard some questions about... Yep. Um, one that happens in the order of things, and there were some concerns about it. And the, the order of things with him, I was going to keep this up no longer than a year because I wanted to use this as electricity there oh, okay. rather than bring the temporary service. The, I wasn't aware of that. The deal I have with him is I'm going to keep this for no more than a year. I may finish in less than a year, or I may have power and may not need it. But that's it's part of the work site until right. that's done. Correct. Okay. So this neighbor here. Facing now, this is kind of shifting the way the street is coming. But I know they uh, she you had concerns. You're shifting it over what two or three feet? Mm -hmm. yeah. Two and a half. So she, she has some concerns. Is she not here? Um, I forget her name, but if you 
Oh. Ben's here. Alicia's yeah. not here. I'm, I'm, asking, I'm sorry, I'm asking for um, the mayor's uh, then. Yeah. Ted's here. We're here. Yeah. We're here. Yeah. Okay. You had some concerns about the, the stormwater coming down the street and you wanted, your wife said you wanted a berm in front of your house or some, something that kind of managed the water. Sounds uh, true. <laughs> uh, my only thing is a comment about the water pressure. Maybe it was a woman. This is water pressure. pressure. I don't. I don't, remember, uh, I don't remember. I don't remember that either. But yeah. whatever. Okay. No, no, no. Um, wasn't Betty. Well, there's nobody. Okay, whatever. Okay. Not here. I'm saying there's nobody here. That's. This is where it is. Okay. But we're catching all our water. It was an older woman. I might have misunderstood yeah. where she yeah. lived and. Don't remember her name. Okay. We will. Uh, Do we open this? This is a yeah, public hearing. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, this is a public hearing. Uh, I guess I'm going to open up. Let's. Any questions and comments on the changes that we had today? Let's start it off that way. Yes. Go ahead. Um, I think this is relating to the changes. What I was hoping to hear was, because we've gone kind of this conversation has gone back and forth since the initial letter, I think it listed like 13 or something non-compliant items. So I was hoping to get a revised list of what the non-compliant items are now and how many are there. Sure. Right. There are none. I don't think there are any. No, I don't think we have any, any waivers required from Original plans that were submitted like a month or two or three months ago. Yes. So all those non compliant items are now in compliance? They, conf uh, they conform to our, uh, our uh, engineering uh, rules, and that's when I asked the representative from Beta that, you know, they've engineering wise, okay. they've engineered it to the point where it could, and the town's consultant believes that it will work as designed. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, through the chair. The letter we received from Beta today, which is dated January 11th, I think, we got it yeah, yeah, said all the comments were closed and that everything else met proper standards, okay. including the changes. And we got rid of Easy Street, if I remember. Well, yes, we're getting rid of East Street. It's gone. We don't have a name for it yet. This like we do not have a list in here. Sure. How about just Leonard Court? So little, there's so few. No, lines. no, the they don't Leonard like the Court name. and, and they Leonard like the Street same. will they confuse like confuse the firemen. Don't like that. We had a couple of names, Claire, that might work, and we'll go to the select ones <coughs> that they like. But, and yeah, that's not our pervert. I let's, researched some of the history in that area, try to find yes. some, but they're all taken, like Phipps and Clark. Well, no, <laughs> actually, let's save them. Let's a couple of them. Uh, we'll we'll see you, but we'll find where we are. Let's we'll follow through with that. Okay. Other public comment on this street? Yes, sir. We got you at the end of last time, so you don't have to repeat yes. what, I, what you I, did. You know, I won't repeat it all. I, okay. I just had two other thoughts. Um, generally speaking, our neighborhood, I'm 75 Grove Street, Ted Barker Hook. Um, traffic is building and building and building in our neighborhood. It backs up from Main Street. And adding another six to nine cars immediately in our neighborhood scares me beyond the traffic concerns I mentioned last time. The other um, thought I had was, according to my checks. Last uh, week, we heard 14 times that things should be okay. It ought to be enough. It's within the minimum requirement. Um, it's a little less than I'd be comfortable with, but I think we can get by. Those kind of comments, according to my check, we heard 14 times at the last meeting. Um, and the one time Mr. Barbieri had a chance to give to the town, he decided it wasn't in his business model to help with the water issues. And yet we're going to, it feels like, move forward with all these should-be's, ought to be. Well, it's kind of cutting it close, but we think it's going to be okay. So my question is, I don't understand what the town is getting out of this, but we're going to allow a businessman, in the, because it doesn't fit his business model, to give very little back to the town in exchange for should be, ought to be, could be within the minimum, I prefer a different material, but this ought to be okay. Okay, let me answer that. What we're giving the town is allowing them, 
the developer, or the property owner, to develop this property within this property rights. And it's not that the town is excited about building another dead-end street. We don't like that at all. However, town council determination is that the applicant has the right to develop the paper street do the historic access and provide that. Council, and this is not the only, first time we've had one of these type of streets before us, recommends that the board apply the current subdivision regulations to the greatest extent practical given the historic layout and the pre-existing development on the road. And that's that's what we're, we're stuck doing. It's not that this board, probably if you took a poll, doesn't want to add three more lots. The amount of traffic, it's, it is what it is. I mean, it got laid out in the 1800s, and we're stuck with it. And whether we like it or not, we're stuck with it. And, you know, if we said no, we'd get sued, and we'd lose, and, you know, we'd spend more money than, than, than we're at. That's, that's the problem that I'll say this board has. Are we going to, I don't know whether we're going to vote for it. I assume we probably would based on knowledge of these members of the board but I'm not saying we have a lot of choice but we can either spend our time in court on something we're going to win or lose and quite frankly from an engineering standpoint our engineer said that it meets the requirement now this is the water thing I personally intervened with uh, the DPW director, since our last meeting, tried to get him to figure out a way to make the water work. And I think they're about $12,000 apart, some way or how. And quite frankly, it's an impasse as far as this board has authority to, to do anything about. Unfortunately, because I, th I think for $12,000 it would be a win-win situation. Mm -hmm. But that's where, where it's at. Uh, I don't know. I don't know how else to, to, to say it. And I know it isn't the news that you want to hear. No, 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 I understand. Yeah, and, yeah. And, and, Mr. Chair, you know much more about yeah. what's going on than I. If I My could only thought is the greatest extent practicable, balanced with all these ought to be's, could be, should be. Sure. That's well, where I feel like there might be well, some room. Well, from the greatest... I, I could be wrong. The greatest... We, we've gotten a clean bill of health at this point from our consulting engineer. So the engineers have solved the technical problems. Okay. And, you know, if I could also respond to me, not yeah. working with the town, I hope Mr. Westland told you that I was more than generous in that offer, number one. Number two, you were trying to put a little easement to the school. I was very willing yeah. to do that. Number three, I don't know if you people were aware of it, but they're already drawing a cross-country track on my property, which I'll be willing to get to. I work with the town. Yeah, with yeah. all due respect, Mr. Chairman, this is not like a cram it in. This is there are legal Beats. rights which town council right. agreed right. that right. we have, and, right. Right. and I, I think, think we've approached this. Yeah. Yes, sir. And we've yeah. approached this with uh, all due respect. Yeah. And, and I would add that at the beginning of the discussion, probably one of the biggest givebacks that Mr. Barberi was willing to try to give to the town or do with the town was some cooperation with the school department on that other parcel, whether it was um, mm -hmm. bus parking or something, and mm -hmm. the school department was absolutely not interested. Mm -hmm. So, you know. Yeah. I did, I did yeah, talk to the school superintendent, uh, and that is still the position that yeah. they would they prefer not okay. to be yeah. involved. Mr. Goldman. Um, with all due respect, Mr. Chairman, through you, <coughs> Uh, Mr. Barberi's property meets the center trail, and at the center trail, over the years, there has been serious runoff issues from this property onto center trail, um, and at times it tends to wash it out and uh, cause problems along center trail in the conservation restriction area. We're wondering if there's any way to get some kind of mitigation um, on the end of uh, where this particular property meets center trail. I mean, he's not, open devel space, he's not developing open for space, hundreds of feet away from there. The open space parcel during storm events, there's serious runoff from the property down by center trail. 
It abuts on the trail. Okay. Well, I'm walking. I just can't figure out where it is that it comes in, Dave. Where you, where there's an open space. Yeah. If you're walking from the loop road and you come to the open space, there's an open slot the in field? a side trail. There's a field. Yeah. That's his field. Oh, okay. No, it's not. No, it's not. No, no. 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 it's not. I walk it all the time. Of the here. Yeah. Yeah. And if I can speak yeah. to it, Peter Lagoy. Um, I did a lot of the work in the center trail where Mr. Barbieri's property is, is further towards the loop road. Um, if you're coming from the loop road in the center trail, that first bridge yeah. is sort of the end of the town property that he owns for another couple hundred, what is it, two, three hundred feet, Dave? Yep. Yeah. Well, yeah. So in that area is not an issue that in okay, we had a major issue on the Okay. I was under the impression that... No, I, I think at the bottom okay. of this, there's also a concrete structure that goes underneath the path. So I, I don't think it goes under the goes across the path. I think it goes under the path. Okay. But not at that point. Not at that point. Okay. Other comments, questions before we... we, we yes, go ahead. Um, so I'm wondering, uh, during the walkthrough, Mr. Barberi said that he didn't intend to build more than three houses. And then at the last meeting, I know that he also said it was not his intention to develop further, because we talked about the potential of buying Mr. Terry's land and developing more there, which sounded like it would be very difficult, and yet there was a little bit of an opening there. So I'm wondering, is there a way to at least reflect in the minutes that it is not his intention to build more? We, we can reflect that yeah, in that, but, but, the, the, but the practical part is is that we have not created any more frontage than you need to. Correct. Let me be very clear. My land I'm building three lots on. If Tom Terry decides to do something, I don't know his rights as far as tying in and all that, but I have three conforming zoning square footage frontage lots on my road. No, I understand that. Okay. In that. I mean, I'm not saying it's going to happen or not going to happen someday, so I mean, it's almost impossible, but somebody could do something there. Well, he's, Mr. Terry's got the, the problem of extension of dead ends mm -hmm. without a second in and out, which is why we originally said no to this until town council said, sorry, it's an existing road. Otherwise, we'd be talking about something completely different. Mr. So. Chairman, in Elaine's memo today, um, there was discussion of a uh, um, performance guarantee. Yeah, I'm getting to that. Okay. That's kind of next on the list. Are there other public comments? Okay. Uh, Two. Uh, uh, oh, go ahead. Uh, Ken Parker, uh, 16 on Clint Street. Uh, there was a question there about potential easements for the cross-country in the lake. Is that to be decided at this point or at a no. later time or perhaps no. that work? No, I, that, that's, I, a se that's a separate, not part of the, the deal with the planning board tonight. No, we saw it on the plan over the weekend. <laughs> I actually plan? brought that to Elaine's attention before the first meeting. I said there was somebody, they contacted me about doing that about six or nine months ago, and I said, come to the planning board, we can work it through it. Never heard from them again. Then they told me that it was drawn on the plan over the weekend. It was in the news for the cross country. But, but Tim killed off is doing something with the, with that cross country. I think I saw it on hot news. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Peter okay. doing it? Yeah. Okay. Let's uh, let's talk at this point about the performance guarantee. Well, I, I'm sorry. I have a couple what? more questions about this at this part. At this part, I'd like to talk to you uh, about. Um, and one question is from um, Dr. Parker, who is a chair of the of our Upper Charles Trails Committee. Um, we are talking about still having the access way from the school parking lot where it is now no. through to the Paper nope. Street. No. Um, why Why is that a no? The, 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 school, the school doesn't want it. Right. Well, that school, I, the school hasn't said no to me. I, I was talking okay. to the chair. We haven't gone into great detail about it, but if the walkway is there now, why would it be removed? What's there now? The walkway is there now. What walkway? Oh, there's no walkway through this property. There, there's, no. a, there's a walkway that's actively used by people living in the neighborhood. People uh, are walking through a field. They might be cutting through something, but there's no path there. What I had said, and I'll, I'll still live by my rule. Well, Pat, you said no path there. It's Paper Street. It's been there since 1800. No, no, no. no, no the street goes here. It ends there. For, like, it ends at the Here's school the wall. school property. Okay. 
but I'm next, still open next question. For, okay, my question is for actually for Dr. Parker. Would you think this is a useful uh, access way for for the overall trail system in town? No. I don't think I have any jurisdiction over that. Not jurisdiction, this is your opinion as a trails person. I'm always in favor of there being more access to everywhere, just as just a general. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not in favor of access to a, a, a trail that goes right through somebody's side yard in, in a house, quite frankly. Well, they're building next to a school, and That's there's a parking lot there. We've been there, Frank. We spent months on this through the chair. Well, I, I'm, next. I'm against it if they're going to include that. My next question is, this doesn't show that the new... Well, wait, wait, let me start. I, I don't want you to be against something for no reason. I'm trying yeah, to tell I'm, you, I'm, as I told the whole point, reason, I feel. That, that I was very happy to let the school put a second yep, answer. I know you have. Everybody said they don't want it. I don't want you to say I want gonna, it. I know, but I don't want you to not vote because hey, run for something that nobody today. wants. I mean, I don't want to do something hey, okay, they don't based, want. Based on your new drawing from today, to, 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 I don't get the it. new one from today with the colors and everything. Where where is our uh, circle? It's uh, not here. That's it's, right. in the, it's in that circle. Okay. No, no, okay. It's in the, it just didn't fit that one. It's in here. Okay, good. Uh, I still like to see a fence to give neighbors privacy from uh, the building and construction, and I don't understand why we, that's. We had discussed it. There was a two way street. Alicia decided she didn't really want to do anything, so we decided that um, we we're not going to do the fence. I think it's different from the way I'm hearing it. I, I just I have no understanding why the fence is being removed. Which fence? Which fence? About? The fence. I think yeah, yeah, there was never a fence. Yes. There, was, there was a fence here, Frank. Right. Yes. All right, I, I can That's speak to that. Moved. Okay. Right. We had a, a handshake deal that she was going to get this piece of property for grant me the easement, et cetera, et cetera. I met with one of her people. And then she called me back just in any way to get a six-foot stockade fence with it. I said, sure, fine. Okay. She came to the hammer the last time. Everything was fine. She had the easement, which was a one-page swap. Uh, she supposedly hired an attorney, although we never heard an attorney's name. It, it just stumbled along to a point that it was very unfeasible for me to make that transfer with her. But Excuse what, me. What does have to do with that? Excuse me. She was the one it, it was a deal. It was a deal that didn't happen. I thought when and I heard the fence last Mr. Meeting, Chairman, let him speak. Alicia I, advised me that she is planning to sell the property in the not too distant future. She felt it was in her best interest for the value of the property not to change things. And so that was great. We had a nice discussion and it didn't work out. We might hear it different ways, but I heard the fence at the last meeting and it had didn't have anything to do with that. So Well that's the only fence that we had ever proposed was the one that I made the deal with her on. There was never any other fences proposed. But, okay, you're not giving her the Frank, extra land. Let's, let's try to move on clarity because I don't We're running out of time. If we're running out of time, then it takes the time it takes. Okay. You, you're, you're offering space and now she doesn't want it, whatever. So the I don't deal understand why done. there still can't be a fence. She can put a fence up. All right, so you... you well, that was part of my up. deal to her for compensation for her giving me that. <coughs> I had to move this, redesign it, pay all that money. Now I got to put a man home and catch basement. I would have right. loved to have shaken the hands and given it that land. Right, because I've, I've, I've heard some of that, but I haven't heard from them. I heard some of that, but not <laughs> the new the last meeting. Not the shifting part from that. Right. This is the first I've seen of the shifting. Right, yeah, absolutely. So I, I would like to hear from them. So I, I don't know if I could vote today, if, no matter which way I'm um, going. <coughs> and then one last question to Mr. Meyer. I, I, are you sure, if he's still here? Yeah, you're, yeah. You're, you're you're sure you're okay with that? You 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 weren't the people that were saying that you were worried. No, it wasn't. Uh, okay, I just wanted to be clear. Yeah, no. Okay. I know. I'm not saying I'm okay with it. <coughs> if I may interject, Mr. Chairman, um, yeah. with all respect, I understand Mr. Durst's concerns about neighbors, but um, if the applicant's legal counsel, he's bound by the law and he's bound by honesty and he's bound by his word is saying that he spoke with the abutter and the abutter doesn't want the fence. Um, I, ha I have to assume that the lawyer in front of us is, is telling us the truth about what the abutter said. And if the abutter said that, far be it for this board to impose something on an abutter who told Attorney Resnick he didn't want it. I just think that's that's a settled issue, regardless of what we've been heard before. Yeah, we were talking and emailing all week, Mr. Chairman. She, uh, Alicia went up for the long weekend skiing. She actually had a little bit of an accident, cracked the rib, and, or three, 
and um, you know disavow it throughout the week. Have fun. Record. Tell me some. <laughs> You're on. <right. laughs> I've emailed some back it up too. <laughs> any, any more questions? If, if I may, from what I've heard, she didn't want the extra land because it was a it's needed for stormwater management, so she wouldn't be able to use it. Is that? Yeah. That's what we're looking at. That, that was she could use it. It does have a small swell, but she could yeah. have used it. No, but she mentioned that that made her less interested in getting the land. So my understanding from last meeting was that you guys were putting a fence up, and now I'm hearing that's between you and her, and now neither of these neighbors are here, and these things are changing. I would like to hear from the neighbors more precisely because I'm hearing different things, and you're saying not to say that through, you're not through saying the chair. Don't you think they'd be here if they were objecting? You just said she was injured. She came home. She's home now. She was injured last weekend. She couldn't drive because her ribs hurt. And today's Monday. I'm yeah. saying, here's what I'm saying. I don't think, I, okay. I have enough information hey, enough. to vote. Okay. And I don't think none of us do unless we hear from the neighbors. Yeah. Who Let's aren't here, which they should be. They aren't here. Uh, Let's talk about performance guarantee. Mr. Chairman, basically the <coughs> two suggestions that Elaine had, one was to subject ourselves to a covenant. This is not a subdivision. We prefer not to do that. We're totally willing to establish a performance guarantee prior to obtaining any building permits, which was choice number two. Two. And, <coughs> and we would set that at the time you are requesting a lot release? No, no there, we're not going to have a covenant, so it's not going to be a lot release. We would, we would, again, have the evaluation done of what remains to be done on the roadway, just like in a typical situation, and then we would have to post that performance guarantee prior to obtaining building permits for the lots, which is essentially, essentially what the release of the covenant accomplishes. So you can get building permits. We'd say no building permits until you set the bond. And but the bond we're, we're happy to do that voluntarily. It's a great suggestion. Okay. So basically the condition would be no building permits until what? Mm -hmm. uh, until a performance bond has been set. If you if you and received. Okay. Um, Mr. Chairman? Yep. Can we also just... I know it's been an issue since we started. I just have a, a tally of who's able to vote. Everybody but Frank Sebo, I think. Yeah, everybody except uh, Frank Sebo. So, Frank, you haven't seen the tape? No, you it's missed actually. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So it's me, John, Claire, Frank, Fran, and Matt. Okay. So that is how many of us? One, six. Two, out of six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And you're going to need a five vote majority vote. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, do you look at all the conditions we had with this in the Lane's memo? Yeah, sure. They were all appropriate and fair. And okay. Entertain a motion to approve it with the understanding that Condition A is, is the performance guarantee that before any building permits are issued, a receipt of a performance guarantee based on work that needs to be done on the street. Uh, or to approve the design and construction plans for the paper street uh, with the following conditions A through N as put in Wayne's memo for pages four and five. And oh is there a would we require a performance guarantee or, or I mean bond or something like that? That that's no, no. that was that's that just what we discussed. The forms Would, of the guarantee. Or I what about what about a cleanage or clean clean up or things that need to be done, like we do normally on site plan? It'd be part of the bond, I would imagine. Yeah. Okay. Clean and catch basin. Um, sure. Ooh. I think what the condition stated is that the town's engineer would establish the amount of the bond after the base coat was on, and so it'd be the typical yeah typical situation. Sure. Remaining okay. work to be done. Okay. Got a question? Yeah. 
Could you put a condition in there to uh, remedy the, the water situation, getting town water for those units as opposed to the well? I am not sure we can do that because we can't, we don't have the authority to require or give town water permits. I, I, okay. I wish we could. It was just a question, Mr. Chairman. Thank I you. mean, I, it's... Can I add on to that question? Yeah. Could we bump the question to S Board Selectman where we could get something done on the street for the rest of the neighbors while this construction is happening? Why not have some deal? I mean, they can make a deal for parking for more money than this, then the difference we're talking about. It's um, and then he's happy, neighbors are happy, and everyone gets uh, their construction out of the way all in one, one fell swoop. We can ask, is what I'm saying. We've, we've already asked and it's been answered. I, I can't yeah. see tying somebody's development to a discussion with the selectmen. But we can have that but discussion there, if we wish. When we were on the sidewalk, we, we, we heard that Ms. Yeah, Barbier um, was communicating with them. Last meeting, we just discussed, like, well, how come we don't really get the responses we get from we need from other departments? And then Ken reached out, got some, got some answers, but we really don't have the full answer yet. So we no, need to. We kind of have the full answer is that the deal can't be made. Yeah, okay, we get, we get to right. But that's the answer from, that, that from the, the other answer. side and from him tonight. That's corrected. I'm corrected. Sorry. Okay. But what I'm saying is, can we bump this up to the board of selectmen and say, can we ask them to direct our, our town to look at this as a whole because we have the water department, we have DPW, and uh, we have a private builder who is building a street. And we have neighbors that have a need, and we have a developer that has a need. The DPW director has looked at all that, and he's twelve thousand dollars short from where he's got to be to, to make it happen. That's what I heard. And probably the water rate payers will pay a lot of money in a year to increase the water main on Leonard Street when all these neighbors put the right amount of political pressure on the water commissioners or introduce a citizen's petition at town meeting mm -hmm. to, to, to to solve a, uh, an obvious problem. I just think it's a shame that... It may be a shame, but it's, we're, we don't have the authority, in my opinion, in the lane, to, 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 to do water, you know, and we you can't stop it because you don't have town water because they have the right to, to the property owner to, to do it well. I mean, we do have the authority to ask. We've already asked. It's asked and answered. But the board of selectmen, well, we, we haven't done that. It's not our job to take it all the way up. I mean, they, 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 they're the ultimate authority because they are water commissioners for the town. But the DPW guy says he can't find it in this budget to do it. I think he might need some town meeting help with that. But that's... And when does construction start? Uh, soon, I hope. Yeah. You guys vote tonight. Okay. So, did we get a motion yet, Scobie? So moved. Second. Moved and second. And this is the, the motion to approve the design and construction plans for the Paper Street with conditions A through N. And I have a comment, Mr. Chairman. Yep. So I am going to vote yes for this, begrudgingly. Um, because of the water thing. I think there's safety issues. So I do applaud all the abutters that came out and brought their comments forth. Um, our hands are somewhat tied on this one. Um, but you can tell by the angst and the discussion here, nobody on the, I can only speak for myself, do not feel very good about having to vote for this particular motion. I understand the downside of it. I understand what could be. But I'm just kind of laying it out there. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay. I have a discussion point. I'd like yeah. to add two amendments uh, to the um, conditions. One is we add an easement for an emergency access walkway uh, to the school property. And uh, the second, we uh, add a fence between uh, the property, uh, that property. Why don't we take them up separately? If okay. you want to try to make a motion, if you get a second, then, then we'll consider it. 
motion that we include as a condition uh, emergency access walkway uh, between the school property and uh, the two buildings on the end of this project. If I may, how can we make a condition when the school department has refused? You, you can't put this requirement on the applicant when the school department will not allow it. We can't condition something that isn't, isn't doable. And I also think we heard testimony of other neighbors that are worried about more people walking through there on particularly football game days and whatever uh, and making the neighborhood less desirable secure. from that, secure from that aspect. I, I think it's not a, a really good idea to create a foot pathway through this, this area. But do I hear a second for his motion? Okay. Go on to your second one. Um, my second condition is that we do keep the fence that we talked about at the last meeting. Um, on, the, on the south edge of the sh Shamble property. As as the property as the property is not being transferred, uh, put the fence between the two properties. Do I hear a second? Okay, I think we ask. Yeah, okay. I think we're back to the original motion. Further discussion on the original motion? Seeing none, I think we're ready for a vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed say no. All those abstain? I'm abstaining. Abstain. Yeah, he, he's abstained because he can't vote. You know, one abstention. So it's, what, five to... Zero to one. Zero to one. Okay. Uh, motion to close the public hearing. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay, folks. Okay. okay. Today was my Guess you're up, Roy. If you want to be. Oh yeah, we'll stay with my night. We, we are. <laughs> it was to the Waltham City Council at four thirty in the morning. <laughs> yeah. Started at eight. Most good government doesn't occur after ten o'clock, including town meeting. Yeah, bar. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, while they're setting while they're setting up, let me take a couple other items of business. Master plan update. Those who still have outstanding sections, let's get them done. We gotta gotta get that done. Uh, under the correspondence area, uh, Lane, do you want to talk about 203 Palm Street just really briefly while they're setting up? I can just distribute the letter that. Basically, 203 Pond Street, even though the developer has a covenant that is registered in the land court, he went off and sold one of the lots without release. Oh, really? So, I mean, that's kind of disturbing, I guess, is a nice way to put it. But, I can't. I cannot believe that we pulled that off. <laughs> you got a lot of money for it too. Did so you? Yeah. 
my back. Uh, okay. What I would suggest today, because we don't have, I'm sorry, I apologize that we ran over on a couple of items. And your chairman wasn't able to control the schedule so well. Uh, the that we do not open the public hearing for the proposed adjustment to the master plan build area today, that we defer that because we're not going to talk about it anyway, and that would potentially keep Mr. Carp more in the running because he is we are missing one member that you know you're you're getting down to you're at eight, you know, you could get down to seven, and that needs a six vote. So we don't want to open that particular portion, but we'll just, and, and it's your option and whether you want to continue with the with the public hearing, but we are missing one person. Brian is very reliable. He will watch the tape, and this will be his first absence. So, but. So, Mr. Chairman, yeah. may? Yeah. So can you explain to me who is missing, and, and your expectation is that the member who's missing will watch the tape and, and will? Yeah. Brian. Right. Right, so. Brian Carp is, is pretty reliable, and he will watch the thing. So, okay. So anyway, we will open the continued public hearing for the site plan review uh, portion only for the Osmond for the north, northeast, northwest, and north sub villages at Legacy Farms. This consists of. 425 housing units. Okay. We are following our outline. And I think the first item that we were kind of half in the middle of the last time was the importance of trail connections, and restricted parking, amenities. How does it fit with the overall master plan special permit? Overview. And I believe in your package today you got a plan with some colors on it that shows where the trails were and, and where their changes are going to be made. And somewhere. There was one mail down to you that had the blue. Yeah, this, this is the. the, the blue one. One. Nope. Nope, it's the wrong right one. Here. Wrong one. Yeah. Yeah, I saw it. I did too. Uh, here it is. It looks like this. Nope. Yeah, yeah, we got that one. Not that one. Uh, it's this one. It's this one. It is that one. Yep. It is that one. It is that one. It is it. It's got a yeah. lot of blue. Mm -hmm. And I thought we can only, in color, we can only print eight and a half by 11. Okay. I think so. So we do have an 11 by 17 Great. copy that we can distribute if it please the board if you don't mind John. We do our best so to kill as many trees as possible on this. We'll try not to. That's, well, a, that's why the smaller paper is trees are cut down. So that's on page six of okay. the uh, of this package. Good. It'll make it easier to read this. We have page numbers. Page numbers. <laughs> so if I read the legend, Ken, you got one? Yeah. Okay. Um, the blue, the blue ones are the lines that were in the master plan, and then there are some red where we're going to take it out, and then there's some green where we're going to. Added, I guess. Is that is that the best way to describe yeah. that? Yeah. So essentially, the purpose of um, of this plan, what we wanted to do was show what was previously provided to the um, to the board by way of by way of trails, and that that is blue. And then, obviously, where the development has shifted a little bit, we show the, the red line there, essentially, uh, where, where there's a little bit of an impact there. So we show those trails that are being. Um, essentially modified uh, because they don't really make make sense with the development and then we show in green 
where we thought additional connection points um, made sense to connect the development into the, the trail network. You know, so for, for instance, down in this area over here, it made sense to you know, connect, make a connection up to, to Phipps Street over here and to bring this trail network into that intersection right there. So, so we could not only, um, really we could bring the, the trail network into the, you know, the, the neighborhood. Um, and essentially back in this area as well, we just showed some of the, the movements around that back, that back area, that connection right through here, which we thought would make sense to connect to this, this road. And I can and point that out on the larger plan. I just don't want to laser point the lane right in the eye. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. So the blue trails that John is referring to are shown here. Those were part of the original master plan special permit trail network. Uh, and where you see these red lines are where there were trails proposed as part of that plan, but we've just pushed them out slightly to accommodate the new curve of the road uh, and, and fit in with the development. And then we're proposing some additional connections in green uh, that connect up areas at the perimeter into our trail network uh, at the perimeter of the site so that it is internally connected and and uh, externally connected as well. Just, uh, oh, go ahead. Point of clarification: two things. Uh, the, the trails. Just so mentally, I can kind of get my arms around it. Is it two feet wide? Is it just dirt? Is it like stone dust on it? Mm -hmm. So that's the first question. The second question is where they come to the streets. Is there a, a post there that identifies it as a trail? Yeah. If you don't mind, I'll sure. Answer. Yeah. Uh, like we've started to do on the south side, there will be a four by four post with a sign that says trail, right. and then we have these little tags that trails use with a little arrow on them. Those would be no. placed as you go through on various trees to direct you. It's going this way. It's going Perfect. that way. And we started clearing trails where they meander, and it's on the natural soil. It could be anywhere from four to six feet wide. They're not, they're not two feet. Perfect. Thanks. That's just helpful mentally. Okay. Let's let's kind of go through each segments of, of these, and maybe you start at one side of the plan, and let's just kind of talk about it. Mm -hmm. The one trail over here skirts goes from Reservoir View Road basically across an open field. Up in Where this corner yeah. over here, I think. Right there. Right there, Ken. Oh, yeah, that's helpful. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm going to go kind of clockwise starting at that one. Okay. That's going to be close to a, a, an area that's going to be developed later. Correct. Yeah. So, so, Ken, a lot of those trails, like that specific one you just spoke about, that's well outside the, the villages that right. Pulte is proposing. And I, and I would imagine that when Roy comes in with his future uh, age-restricted development, right. that the trails in the general vicinity of, that, of, of those homes would, would be amended or worked with, with his sure. development at that time. But I, I'm, We're just showing I'm trying to get a, the big picture of trails at this point. That's right. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and quite frankly, there's a couple of things I'm going to ask you as we get around here sure. uh, to try to make the picture a little bit better. And now, if I go to the next one here, which then the, the that, that first one is unchanged from the master plan special permit. Mm -hmm. It's all in blue. I've got the second one in here, which has got the little hiking s signal on it, which is this section in here, which is through the age-restricted area. Why? What does that terminate at, at the end there? At, at the, you know, you got it on the map here, and it kind of terminates. Does it? Does it go to some place, or does, is that the one that goes off to the lake? What? The state park is on the other side. It's a connection of the state park. And, and so there is there is a state park trail there that that connects to. There's a trail there. But but that 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 is on the boundary with the state park. The the next two zones that have a little hiking signs. It gets steep there and it goes downhill and there's a I think there's a metal fence still and uh, so probably right around that point you couldn't really go to the state park because it gets too steep and sure. I'm looking at Kansas. I have a much larger plan back at the office that shows 
Well, this, this, this here unfortunately stops at the property line. Right. We have logic or the version that shows you where it goes. Can, can, can we as an action item for, for this item to see how, in context of. Sure. I'll, I'll bring that next time. Okay. Now, if I go around to the top of the. which is north. Northeast Village, mm -hmm. right into Chestnut this street. area. Chestnut Street, yeah. Chestnut Street, which uh, obviously it's not going to be Chestnut Street very long because we right. already have one of those in town. That's right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, besides, the Chestnuts are all dead. Uh, in that area, I see a connection, and this is on the future road into the senior uh, housing area. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of a green, which allows people from that area to get onto the trail and I can see where the red kind of obviously goes through people's backyard so you kind of routed it around correct uh, mm -hmm. you're kind of traveling the gas pipeline easement or yep. on one side of it maybe or on it uh, so, but then when I carry it around a little bit Oh, I see there's a trail crossing in green right here where this guy's loop basically goes through houses that are 20 feet apart. Yeah. Well, we can... Yeah. Yeah, Mark, I'm sorry. Yeah, so we, when we looked at addressing the planning board's comments from the last meeting, we realized that we wanted to put the connections back on up in this northeast village that were previously anticipated. And so... And then we wanted to give a connection from our neighborhood in, into those into the trail system. We didn't have one previously, so we're showing it where the grading best allows, Got where it. that green connection is. But in a in a revised plan set that we're going to submit to the planning board, that when we make a bunch of different planning adjustments that we're we've been talking about, um, we're gonna we'll, we'll open up more room there, and we'll and we'll designate a more of a trail so there'll be a post like Roy said and then you know, we'll probably do some screening some type of evergreens to to delineate the path through the homes okay so um, that's the conceptual location but we'll we'll fine-tune we'll, that yeah, okay. space and, those and, homes and at, at this point for members of the planning board because we have so many discussion items going on I'm not encouraging them to make every damn change on a you know you know we'll, we'll go nuts with mountains of paper but Conceptually, I think, and I want consensus of the board, I think we like what you hear about opening it up, move, shifting the houses around a little bit so that, you know, there is a trail connection to that loop, and I think that's kind of key. That's right there. Yep. And I think there's a trail around this open space in, uh, yeah. in, in, speaking over here. Yeah. The, the yeah. So, so there's a current. This is this is Holt land right here. Right. And there's currently a trail that goes around. Sure. That that development and with access actually out that way, and towards the state park that yeah. way. On old on old trails. So basically, that's got to pick up that trail yeah. somewhere. Okay. Isn't that right. And we're we're up? showing those oh, connections yeah, at the property line. line. Yeah. yeah. This way, yeah, I'm yeah. kind of surprised that you don't have a, a marked trail going in. I mean. So th there's currently an existing trail that comes into, there's like a wall here. I would expect that you might want a trail going into the, into here from there, and then you could get on the Hulk property get around to this part over here. But isn't that Ashland? No. Uh, it, no. It's close to, it's close to Ashland. Fawn Ridge uh, is uh, Hopkinton. Where's the property? Uh, Deer Ridge there. might be, is Deer Ridge Hopkinton or? Yeah, I know I, yeah. I know I've walked that right, trail right the, here. The tell line. Line yeah. 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 You can probably you can probably draw the town line if you, you see where the solid lines end. You can probably draw a line right along there and that's probably the town line. Okay, so so kind of connections into uh, Fawn Ridge and maybe er, 
we can look for that connection. And, you know, it, it might be nice also is you had this red that was down here near this mm -hmm. area. If it connects in here, then then you're off the road. I mean, you get here to the road to get to the state park, but maybe you, maybe you go through the woods to get to the state park. That would be a hiking problem. There's a wetland here. Okay, so it's it's pretty. We might not get through there. What we're, yeah, what we're proposing is that you could use the, the sidewalk that connects through the neighborhoods. But at this, there's a bit of a pinch point to the development right there, where this wetland is close by the backs of those homes. So to to slip a path behind there, you'd be in in the. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, you'd be in that yeah. buffer area. That, that is, is correct. Is some of the houses in the 100-foot buffer there? Um, there's two corners of the of the homes are within the within the 100-foot buffer. That's the only the only part within the development that's in there by way of homes. I think you're going to might have a little trouble with those, but that's. Yep. Yeah. No, we did meet with the commissioner earlier tonight, and we reviewed the proposal. Were they happy with that? They they seemed okay. They they were happy that with all of these homes and with all of the development that only there was two? only there was only two homes yeah. that were in their okay. jurisdiction. Okay. Obviously, with the pinch point, we're not going to get. Is is that wetlands a wetland that one would like to see, or is that wetland like a swamp? Okay. Well, yeah, that's kind of a stream kind of wetlands, um, Stilroy. Um, the section that they're pointing out is kind of a stream area, from what I remember. No, no, no. It looks yeah, like a circle to me. Yeah, it, I'm, I'm not sure it's intermittent. It looks more like a, more like a wooded. circular area. Yeah. It's like a wooded, a wooded wetland. Yeah, it, it shows up better on page one because the aerial is behind the... Um, Okay. No. Are there any horse horse paths from the east? Do people like travel the gas pipeline from on the hor on horses? Should we then try to accommodate that into the trail area from the east? I, I know the cross street folks are big on the, the horse stuff. Well, the nice the nice thing about that is the gas company keeps that pretty well maintained. Yeah. So you can literally ride the whole length of that gas main. Well. All the way down to East Main Street. What's, what's this little J device? That Rating. is the tot lot area. Got That's it. just the pathway around the tot lot. So We've actually, we're looking at connecting that pathway so it won't be a J. It'll actually connect both ends up to the, the sidewalk area here. It'll be a U. It'll be a U. That's gonna does that go across the gas at easement? It does. Just the pathway. The tot lot is not across the gas easement. And then going around, I can see where you've taken the one piece out, but probably this other green connection can substitute for that. I think we got a letter talking about Phipps's connection. That looks like that's doable. Yep, that's shown right here. Okay. Um, oh, I see. Just going out, but not continuing uh, south. I think it goes over Rogers Lane. Right here. It goes into Rogers Lane. Which which one are we talking about now? This uh, one? No, right here. No, that goes into the edge of Phipps. Right. That I understand. Which one were you referring to, Kevin? Sorry. Well, let's. Oh, so so I was uh, I wasn't yeah. realizing that this is Rogers Lane right here. So. Uh, 
these these houses are backing right up immediately to uh, Rogers mm -hmm. land and so it would need a, a <coughs> the path to go through his land in order to connect from this corner of Phipps out to the, to the land of the west I think there's a connection over in the in the bottom left there's there's yeah. a, a connection that goes out right from mm -hmm. Phipps going uh, northeast <coughs> yes to, and there's also the, one here right that goes south though mm hmm Is right. Is this spot? This one here, where we got some red and blue, right here, right. That that's right into Rogers, into the solar farm, and into a seven foot uh, fence. No, actually, it's not. You see this line right here? This line is Rogers' property right here. This yeah. is his piece here. Oh, okay, so, so it's this is actually so it's on our side of it. On the, correct. It, the original plan shows it goes down through that athletic parcel and out the east main. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So, so that that one can work as a connection. That's probably a, a key connection right there, because that's the one we promised for yeah. horses from the people on East Main Street. Correct. And this one from the Wilson Street side over here is that from the Halt Land, or is that from? Oh, well, I I see. It's it's actually from the gas easement that goes through there. Yeah. Okay, so that's sort of the municipal parcel, basically. But you can't really park there. You can just. You cannot park there. Just, you can only access the trailhead there. Yeah, and you cannot really park really well on Wilson, uh, on Wilson Street at that point. No. Or any other point. No, yeah, exactly. That. Maybe. You know, I, I doubt they'll want to do that. Serenity. Serenity House has got a nice parking lot, and after they raise the Serenity House, maybe we could get a trail location there. But that would be from I from ever so. Maybe. I can, I can talk to you if you'd like. That would be nice. Yeah. Are you I mean, tear it down? Yeah. Yeah. Did you guys pr put in those proposed gravel we trail head we, parking? We did, yeah. That there's was based two on that are, that yeah, we were going to get to that. But okay, then, okay. Right, sorry. Are, no, that's okay. Let's t I think, are there other questions about trail routings? It, it, yes. it, it, go ahead. The uh, 11 o'clock one that goes from uh, Lexi North to Kruger. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, it, it's, it's, is that... And this is where it might encourage people to go down Kruger and go try to get to the lake, which they can't really do. It's just blocked off. But um, I was just wondering maybe you could curve it around with the road and make a nice scenic uh, pathway, maybe hook up on the other side. This isn't a nice what-if kind of question. but Well, we're, we're going to spend more time on that one when we do the site plan for that parcel because sure. that will get impacted by I that. couldn't see over your paper. Oh, okay. so the point is, is you want to do it up okay. right there. Okay. Okay. Behind, the, behind, the, behind the lake yep. reservoir, yeah. and you can't, yeah. it's all private property, you can't get to the lake. Mm -hmm. uh, but like, yeah. like Ken said, discussion. it's... We'll revisit separate. that. Well, you can go down Rafferty Road to get to the lake if you're, yep. Yep. If you're going that way. Okay. Uh, That's where I'm going to park. The... Let's talk about parking. Let's let's start talking down in here, and, and, and I'm going to mm -hmm. talk to it in the context of trails, mm -hmm. as opposed to the roadway. Is there any way that you can connect these dead ends along here? That's a great question. We we've looked at that. We've looked at several different sketches for this area, and what we are really trying to do is preserve. A mature stand of existing trees. You can see it right here, Matt. It really shows up better. Yeah, um, if you flip back to page the one, there's a there's a significant grade change between those two um, between these two locations. So there's this kind of rocky ridge with uh, some pretty significant mature vegetation there. So we've intentionally not connected it so that we could maintain. All of, all of that, those mature trees. Can uh, if you point out that? Absolutely. Let me flip back to that color. Yeah, that that is. Well, while he's flipping to that, we did meet with the with the new fire chief today, and also the inspector Tom Poirier. Um, we went over our our turnarounds and our access, and 
um, you know, we'll be meeting with them again and, and making some revisions. But in general, they were they were okay with the hammer heads and the and the overall access and layout. So the area Ken was pointing out was down here in the, the northwest village, trying to connect these two roads through here. And there's quite a bit of grade separation between this street and this street. And on that grade change uh, are these existing mature trees that we're trying to maintain. So we purposely didn't make that connection through there. We, we did, for another developer, it was a choice between a hammerhead and a cul-de-sac and it turned out the hammerhead actually had more pervious surface. And so based on that, we, we as the board on this other one chose to go with the cul-de-sac as opposed to the hammerhead. Mm -hmm. uh, those three, if they're not going to connect, in my opinion, getting a circle where particularly at the one, the two with the trail connections are potentially really good parking locations for people wanting to access the, the trail system and get to the high point with the least amount of effort. For some of us that have not completed their cardiac rehab, uh, those might be some neat places to go. In fact, I know I've enjoyed driving up into that area. This year I'm well ready to hike it. I agree with Ken 100%. In, the, in some of these, I, I can see the proposed gravel trailhead off of Legacy Farms Road. That connects. But then this one here, you got a gravel head trail parking that doesn't connect to a trail. Well, it connects to the, the path system, that's a, the, the sidewalk that's along Legacy Farms Road, mm -hmm. and then that connect, connects you to really every every trail crossing that touches Legacy Farms Road along that whole frontage. Where was it? You talked about some parking areas, and mm -hmm. I thought when you came to design the view the other night, you pointed out some parking. Where was that? Yeah, that was right here, and right here, those gray boxes represent oh, some yeah. some parking areas that are a pull off four from cars. Legacy Farms yeah. North. Like six cars, yeah. ten cars, four yeah. cars each. Four cars, yeah, okay. a total of eight. So that hasn't changed. We're still showing that, Claire. But it'll still uh, head in and then back out into the road. For right now, we're kind of looking at that at this point. But but that's there. Those are shown as head-in spaces at this point. Are they backing out onto Legacy Farms Road? Yeah. That doesn't sound to be too good. Oh, it doesn't sound good. I mean, I think our our initial proposal is that they're low use, low low-use spaces and then rather than making a huge parking lot or making a huge gravel area it's really a, a place for four cars to pull off um, and and you know we thought that was I you know, think you're going to have much more use than eight cars based on the number of people that you see out there walking their dogs and whatever on a on a nice day I agree with that I mean, you know part of Part of this problem with, with the with the road network, there's no excess parking anywhere other than in somebody's front driveway. And you know, I'm, I'm, nobody's going to go park in front of somebody's garage door. So I mean, you've got to create more of the amenity that I think that Claire mentioned at the last meeting as far as trail parking. Which doesn't include banking onto a 40 mile an hour road. So it's very you know, if if wherever yeah, wherever there's a connection, it's not only for the neighborhood, but it's for other folks that might want to, you know, start off at that point. Exactly. I mean, you know, your drive A or whatever it is could be a little bit wider, you know, and have some parallel parking or something at, at that particular area or somehow. I, I'm not trying to design it tonight. I'm just trying yeah. to give you parameters. Yeah. So can I get clarification yeah. from the board on just something that sure. I'm 
want to understand better. So I understand <coughs> Legacy Farms Road North will be a public way when it's accepted by the town and, and therefore we located the public gravel parking areas off of the public way so that they could access the public trails which go through the open space. And I think we expect that our the private villages have pedestrian access through the private villages, you know, to connect the, the Legacy Farms road, road, road North to our sidewalk system and onto the trail, so pedestrian access. But what I'm hearing, what I think I'm hearing and understanding is that um, we're, we're discussing additional parking areas for the trails that are actually in the private condominium development, which would be um, talking about vehicular access to the public through the private development. Is that? I is that, that Mr. Chairman, I guess I have two questions. Do you think four in each location is sufficient? If not, should it be five? And of the two locations that have been chosen, good spots for those? I think we should probably think about that because if it's four, if it's five, I think we can rethink the design a bit so it's a little safer. I think it's more than f five, but that's just me. I, I you know, you got you got sixty something acres worth of open space right. and one, you know, which is prime walking and, and you know, I I suspect that you've got more than that kind of doing it on yeah, a regular basis. Can yes. I address the question of the bike trail at some point? It, let's no, let's let's answer Roy's question. It, so it's going to bear on it because if if we're going to have a bike trail going to Hopkins State Park along the west side along some of these trails, then we're talking a lot more people. And so the logical place for parking would be wherever that trail crosses Legacy Farms North, which is close to is close to the uh, the northernmost of the two and parking enclaves. So the but but I want to know whether you guys are really uh, you know I've been led along to believe and my committee's believe for the last several years that there's going to be a bike path going oh, yeah. all the way from East Main Street along the west side of Legacy Farms to Hopkins State Park. Yeah, so well, the, the some of it's on the east side, but it switches over. Right, so, and it's designed to be wider so it can come It's eight, it's eight, feet, eight feet, if I remember no, correctly. No, but this, let me uh, make, make it clear what, what I'm talking about, because maybe we're talking at different things mm -hmm. here. I'm expecting this trail to, to come to come from about the Methodist property on Main Street, to proceed past the athletic fields in this area, come around here, perhaps right along where, where this trail is marked. But I'm expecting it to be like a 12-foot wide bike path in, 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 in concordance with state regulations for bike paths. To connect. Okay. This, this is the whole vision of, of, of our committee and all the other towns in, in, in uh, around Alston and in the chair, if I may respond to Dr. Parker. Part of um, Legacy Road, Farm Road North starts more eastwardly now, and then, as you see from the bottom, hooks up along the yeah. easternmost side of the property, then hooks up and around north, and is actually due westbound when you're coming up from uh, the up south. Here. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it's instead of going up the middle road, it's now going up and around and arcing around. I understand that. Right. Okay. Well, uh, there is, there is a paved, I'm going to say, sidewalk, bike trail, walking path similar to what's on Legacy Farms Road South that goes all the way along Legacy Farms Road North. All, all the way down to and Route 85. All the way from. Nobody that is is a bike rider would be on that sidewalk normally, other than maybe a five year old. Well, this they can go on the road. I mean, it's not designed for bicycles. Come on, okay. let's be real. It's designed for pedestrians. It's great for pedestrians and baby carriages and five-year-olds on tricycles. It's not designed. It, it was not envisioned for adults to ride bicycles on that sidewalk. And that's just, well. It could be the case for Legacy Farms North, but if so, it's going to have to be wider than it is on Legacy Farms South. It's just not the same thing. A sidewalk is not a bike path. Actually, the sidewalk on Legacy South and the sidewalk on Legacy North are both eight feet wide. The normal sidewalk is five feet. I'm not saying whether it's right for bicycles or not, but it is eight feet wide. If 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 if, if we could, because I know we're running short time, to keep the design going, if we could spend a couple of minutes just talking about the two parking areas, are they in the right place? Number one, 
And if they if they are, can we if we need to increase the amount of parking, we'd like to design that to bring it back to for the appropriate amount of parking, whether that's four cars, six cars, eight cars. I mean, we're just trying to get a little direction on that. If if that's the only way the public's going to get in, then four four each is not going to make it. And I don't like the design of pulling back out type thing onto a 35 mile an hour road. No, it's got to be. We'll, we'll actually bring a, little, a, a drive driveway in, so you won't have to do that. Yeah, so you can just a little turn around right yeah, side. We'll have to turn around, so you'll be fine. Yeah. You won't have to do that. Now, I also don't have a problem if you took on one of these at the end of the Juniper Street. If you put a cul-de-sac and you actually brought it over into the restricted land and had the parking put the whole cul-de-sac on the restricted land, you know, maybe that makes up for your, your one house that you were missing in that area. Put put the cul-de-sac on the restricted land and that's and where the parking could be around the, the, the cul-de-sac. Then you're talking people ac accessing that parking lot from going right through these uh, Pod, right. Right. That was then. That was my question that yeah. I was trying to. Yeah. Plus, if I'm a if I'm that a butter, I don't want to look at it. No. Well, then I guess then the board needs to talk about all the restricted land throughout this whole development is open to the public, even those pieces in and amongst those those units. Mm -hmm. So if the public isn't going to be able to get there, then why is it restricted? Land? Well, they'll get there. They just can't necessarily bring their car there. That's a big difference. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, if you got a restricted land that you can't access, then it's not worth anything. Well, well, the, the, we have pedestrian to access to it, just not, well, not no, a place to park at, at all of it. To it is off of the Legacy Farm Road North at, at any and all of the connections. And some of the but nicest land for walking is, is further into the site. Um, so it would be nice to have some good access points um, to allow people to get to those trails from, from different areas. Part, part of the vision is isn't to get to that land from the south, from the athletic field area? Well, I, I was hoping so. I mean, there is a trail from the athletic field. Yeah. But to me, to me, I, it would be desirable to be have some parking up up the hill, as close as you can get up. Oh, this yeah. up here. But, well, up off the near near Tennessee, closer up to uh, yeah, where Wilson. Wilson. Well, uh, you know, you want to get. Right now, you drive up. If you if you're going up there, you drive up a bunch of the farm roads, which are all gone. And excuse me, one second. One you know. thing you might think about: this is Wilson Street here. Yeah. We actually have a paved. It's, it's quasi. I'll call it quasi paved. Just get some holes yeah. in it. There's a, there's a road here right now, and it's been here for almost yeah. ever. It comes all the way up to here. I'm wondering if we cleared the brush away just so you don't scratch your car. You literally could drive in into a little area right here or that, right here. That would work. That would work, I think. Matter of fact, this might be the place you could actually put, you know, eight or ten cars right in here. And the nice thing about being here, you're out of everybody's way. And for me, you know, in all different directions. That's that, 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 that kind of works for me. I think if you did that in conjunction with the two you had over here, now you've got strategically three locations, <coughs> two in uh, Lacey Valley Road north, and another one up the Wilson, so you're coming from three different directions. It's probably a good compromise. Plus we keep it out of the subdivisions there, yeah. because... But, but, you know, you keep, you know, you keep it away. But that's what I'm saying, right? Yeah. So No, you'd be, you'd be way back here somewhere. Right, but what I'm saying, right, you're not driving in, right? So. No, the other way, if you come off Legacy North, like well, the original you wouldn't proposal, come in here at all. correct, yeah. right? Exactly. I think so that's a benefit. Gets privacy. At the same time, you could do a nice parking area here. It's actually very pretty driving in there. In, in addition to parking. So so yes. In addition to the other parking spaces. The spots right. on Legacy North. So now, I'll just for I can say, you, let's nice. say you did six in each of these, and you did maybe another six or eight over here. You could have 20 parking spaces. 
that's very cool. Are there comparable public parking spots on the south parcel to access those? There are three. And where are those located? Down by the Pont the Bridge. Okay. We call those the Ken Weissman for parking spots. <laughs> Reserved? No. <laughs> no, they've been parking the water truck in there for the last two years. <laughs> they stopped doing that after we got an email. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I guess I, I did insist on those if people remember on the board. Okay, hey, we're we're beyond our witching hour. They're going to throw us out of the building. Uh, I think we made some progress. I think we're, we're about three quarters of the way done from from trails. I think we'll we'll hit the restricted versus restricted land and the small strips and those hard questions. Kind of along with that, we can talk with the restricted land, the mature trees and cuts and fills, and you know, kind of that kind of ends up the. I'll say a lot of the design parameters, maybe, and then the rest of them are, are more in the standards of how do we do construction management. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe, you know, I want I want to at our next meeting try to get through it like design type stuff, mm -hmm. so that, and then we'll maybe we can focus in on construction management, but basically. So kind of pick and choose on these. If you see ones that are more design related, mm -hmm. let's let's we'll, we'll focus on those yeah. next. If I may, we've been working with Beta. They gave us a very comprehensive peer review of design related comments, and we also met with the design review board. Okay. Um, and so we have a number of comments that we've been working on, and we have a lot of ideas that we wanted to share with the board tonight. So. If we could have some time at the next meeting, we could share yeah. our ideas and what we want to do to tweak the design in order to okay. you know, improve the, the design and address a lot of the comments that we've, the, the site design related comments we've gotten from your consultants. Okay. And, and some of the materials in the package that I gave you tonight go to that, and we, we have sort of a summary diagram on page eight, and then some. Um, additional exhibits that kind of walk through some of these potential design changes that we wanted to get your uh, your input on so maybe that would be a good um, okay a good thing to use as kind of a jumping off point sure. next next meeting okay I had one comment before we let Roy, your final question one of your questions was the two trailheads do we think they're in the right place on legacy uh, legacy north the first one I think is in the right place the second one do you think it would make any sense to take it a little farther north because another inch or two up, then you have access to both the south trail as well as the north trail? I don't know if that's feasible or not, but if somebody yeah, we, can we can look at that. There's look some at great, it. as you get further north, but is it grade, steeper? So yeah, that's why we put it back. Okay, but there, but there is another we'll tow road well. right there that you can add another connection. That way people kind of, you, you're talking up, up here. Kind of put it closer to the gas pipeline. Yeah, the, the, the <laughs> yeah exactly. Set. Exactly. Again, just a thought, just if somebody's trying to go, just, you let them go north. We'll look at the parking. Yeah, let's go. Sure. Yeah, we'll do that. Yeah. Okay. Blaine, yeah, what time and date do we have next available? February 8th at 830. Yeah. 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 And the uh, models have been put around the entire perimeter of the pile. So whenever we finalize the restrictive covenant, we're ready to transfer that one to the town. Great. Let's let's work on that at our next meeting too, yeah. as a separate agenda item. We'll try to get that resolved. Is somebody from the town's Elaine looked at the pile and made sure it's got enough yards or somehow? Is the pile complete? 
the pile's complete, and if you want, we can have somebody shoot, but I'm confident the right amount of loan is there. Okay. You probably counted the number of trucks. We did. <laughs> Any, anything that can help verify that, that would be okay. But uh, if, if you want, I'll get certification from one more. Okay. Whatever. It's up to Elaine to, to, for, for her to be happy. Okay. Okay. Uh, move to uh, continue both public hearings to the February 8th at 8.30. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Further discussion? Seeing none, how do you vote? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Anyone abstain? Motion carries. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Actually, I'm going to take you off the job. Oh, you can take you. Where, where do you yeah. live? He lives in Barbara. Oh, okay. So he's just right around the corner. Yeah. School Street. Oh, yeah. School in, in Elm Street. I didn't know you were that close. Almost got that one. So, that'll, that'll work. That'll, that'll save me. Oh, oh, by the way, the lieutenant governor is here at 9 o'clock tomorrow morning. It has to do with a compact with the town regarding planning for the track property, I believe. So, 9 o'clock, lieutenant governor is here on Friday night at 11, or at, at 5 to 7 on Friday. Is the governor's coming to Hobby? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to yep. try to get to the early part. Okay. Okay. Where's he going to be? Schedule a site walk of Legacy North for the Saturday. What's the weather going to be looking like? No snow. No snow. No snow. No snow. Maybe that's not. We don't want to. So we'll, 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 we'll assess that in a couple more days. But yeah, uh, we might, you know. Maybe, well, there's no cover, but okay. have you been up there walking your dog, Claire? Oh, yeah. Is it, is it accessible enough? Well, it depends on what you call accessible. I mean, the road's fine, but if you go off, it's about you know, this much. So, snow. so small boots. Snow boots. Snow boots. Snow boots. Okay. Yeah. I, 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 t I t turned down the Elaine's suggestion that we walk last Saturday in 17 degree weather. <laughs> so, uh, it was I mean, when I brought my daughter in law's dog, he went up to his belly in the mud on the oh, side. That was, yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, look for a motion to adjourn. Thank you all for staying late. I move. Second. I move and second. All those in favor of adjourning, say aye. 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 Motion carries. Yes, sir.